All right, let me talk to you. I played 200 days of Stardew Valley. Well, actually it was 358 days, but you'll see why I called it 200 days by the end of the video. In order to make sure I made as much progress as possible, I set goals for the first and second years. Our goals for the first year are the following. Complete the community center, earn a total of 1 million gold, collect 100 golden walnuts unlocking Mr. Key's walnut room, and reach 10 hearts with Krobus and ask him to move in with us. Our goals for the second year are complete the fishing collection, complete the shipping collection, complete the monster eradication goals, and collect all 130 golden walnuts. After all of that, we have one goal for the remainder of the playthrough, to achieve perfection. With all of that out of the way, let's jump right in to day one. We are breaking the mold on day one as we do what pretty much everybody else does on this day. Clear out space on our farm, make a chest, collect any forage items we find, which actually happens to be quite a few, become acquainted with the local trash can population, harvest fiber in the hopes of getting mixed seeds, collect spring onions, do some dilly-dallying at the beach, donate an artifact we dug up to the museum and receive 250 gold for it, plant our 15 parsnip seeds and spend the rest of the night harvesting some more fiber on the farm. It's straight to business on day two as we plant the mixed seeds we collected yesterday and water all of our crops. We chop down some trees, then we visit Willy or William where we receive Stardew Valley's official meta item, the fishing rod. I make a chest, then I spend the rest of the day fishing at the beach. That's right, it's going to be a fishing playthrough for the next couple of days. We're really going to be following the meta for this playthrough, at least during spring anyway. Opening up treasure chests provides me with a small dopamine boost every time, so that's something good at least. On day 3, we return to our natural habitat, the beach. We do some foraging, then some fishing while we wait for Willy's shop to open up. We sell the fish in our inventory, then sell the fish that I kept in the chest I put her yesterday and buy the fiberglass rod and as much bait as I can afford. Then I committed an act that only a certified Tom Fooler would commit. I tried to pick up my chest, but it fell in the water. I was a bit miffed about that one, I can't lie to you. Once again, the rest of the day spent fishing. This time we have maneuvered ourselves to the river outside Leah's cabin. Our goal here is to catch as many shad and catfish as we can before the day ends. I was hoping to get the Neptune's Glaive, a really powerful weapon in a treasure chest, but fortune did not favor us today. We did reach level 4 in fishing though, so that was nice. You know the drill. On day 4, we water all of our crops. It was at this point that I realized I am in for a really long spring. I plan on buying at least 80 strawberry seeds, so if we don't get a bunch of sprinklers pretty soon, I'm going to be watering my crops for the majority of every day. I head to the mountain lake and do some fishing. I promise we won't be fishing for the entirety of spring. This is just something we need to do right now. I take a quick break to deliver a daffodil to Haley, then it's back to the lake for the rest of the day. For the sake of being completely transparent, I want to show you all how badly I fumbled at 1am. This should have been an easy guaranteed catch with a treasure chest, but my brain cells went on vacation and I emerged from the battle empty handed. If there is one thing that became abundantly clear throughout this playthrough, it's that I am a professional fumbler. We reached level 5 in fishing though, so we're making good progress in that area. Marnie visits us on day 5 and presents us with an interesting proposition. We can adopt a cat. I immediately say yes and welcome Louis the cat into the family with open arms. I toss some fish and other items into our shipping bin and harvest the parsnips that have grown. Armed with a pickaxe and some chubs, I meet Marilyn in the mines who gives us a rusty sword. The entire day is spent in here. We reach new levels of bad luck as floor 18 ends up being a monster only floor. Things were looking grim for a moment, but Lady Luck smiled at us on this beautiful night. One of the slimes dropped a wood club. This is an absolute game changer. Armed with this wood club and complete sheer willpower, I defeat the rest of the monsters and eventually make my way to floor 20. I end up passing out on floor 22. How would I describe today? In the words of street poet and philosopher Ice Cube, it was a good day. 
some of our mixed seeds have transformed into fully grown parsnips on day 6, so I harvest those with the quickness. I clear out some more space on my farm to prepare for the shenanigans we will be participating in later this month. Then I head to Clint's to sell some items and ask him to upgrade my pickaxe. I buy 141 potato seeds in Peter. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. 141? Alright, this might just be the most progress I've ever made during the first week of spring. Unfortunately though, that is the end of the good news for today, as we now have to plant and water each and every single one of those potato seeds. You'll notice the seeds have been planted in a 3x3 formation. That is because I have done something I normally never do. I have planned ahead. We're going to make as many quality sprinklers as we can this month to make sure we don't end up watering like 300 melon seeds every day during summer. Lady Luck has once again decided to shine a light on my life as I woke up to the beautiful sight of rain on day 7. I harvest a potato that has sprouted from a mixed seed, then it's time for some more fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, there are multiple things that have happened during the last few weeks, both in real life and in Stardew Valley, that have made me realize my luck is not as bad as I once believed it to be. But this, this is the coup de grace. I opened a treasure chest while I was fishing, and I was blessed with the Neptune's glaive. When it comes to the mines and the enemies that can be found within, this weapon is a game changer. In fact, it's not game changer. It's game over. I continue fishing for the rest of the day, opening treasure chests, catching catfish, and overall just having a jolly good time. On day 8, I am suffering from success. Every single neuron in my brain is engaged as I painstakingly water every single seed I've planted so far. Low on energy, but high on life, I make my way to Pierre's shop to purchase 200 parsnip seeds. You know that phrase, go big or go home? Now, ordinarily I would go home because I'm very lazy, but I am a completely different beast now that I have acquired the Neptune's Glaive. I head to the mines and prepare for a day of adventuring when I realize I have made the rookie mistake of forgetting to collect my pickaxe from Clint. I return a short while later where I am quickly met with a monster-only floor. At this point, the oxygen in my body has been replaced entirely by unrivaled levels of motivation, so this was light work. I continue through the mines, making sure to return to the surface every once in a while to keep my furnaces smelting. I decide to return to my farm around 9pm to plant as many of the parsnip seeds I bought today as I can. In total, I planted around 70 of them. Mother sends us 500 gold in the mail on day 9, which is simply delightful. What is not simply delightful is the fact that between the parsnip and potato seeds, we have over 210 crops planted on our farm. A weaker person would simply water a good few of them, but mainly hope for a rainy day. A smarter person would have made as many basic sprinklers as possible before this point. I am neither. What I am, however, is stubborn to a disgusting extent. I water all of the seeds, completely exhausting myself multiple times. Then I head to the saloon and purchase six salads before spending the rest of the day gallivanting around the mines. Unfortunately, I met my mortal enemy very soon into this adventure. Floors 30 through 39 of the mines. A.K.A. the Dark Floors. A.K.A. the I can't see what I'm doing, I have no idea where I'm going, I'm just going to keep breaking rocks in the hope that I somehow stumble across a ladder floors. The good news is we made it to floor 47 before passing out. Louis provides me with some emotional support on day 10 as I water all of my seeds. This emotional support worked until I passed out from exhaustion. That's right, I passed out at 11.30 in the morning because I watered my crops too hard. Thanks to that little kerfuffle, we awaken on day 11 with an energy bar that is half full. In a rare turn of events, I decide to utilize 10% of my brain power instead of the usual 7.5% and go foraging. Back on my farm, I feast upon the delicious items I collected while watering all of my seeds. You know that meme of the farmer saying, it ain't much but it's honest work? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a lie. It is much work. In fact, I would go a step further and say it is an astronomical amount of work. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day where we very slowly make it down one level, then pass out. On day 12, I am happy to announce that all of our hard work during the last few days was absolutely worth it as all of our parsnips and potatoes are ready for harvest. I sell most of them to Pierre, earning around 15,000 gold. 
With our energy bar full and our spirits high, we spend the rest of the day in the mines before returning home at around 1 in the morning. We reach level 5 in farming, which is good, but we unlock quality sprinklers at level 6, so this might become an issue very soon. Demetrius pays us a visit on the luckiest of days, day 13. As always, we go with the fruit bats over the mushrooms. I spent some time in the mines, collecting iron ore and making sure our furnaces are constantly smelting, then I enter the town square for the egg festival. I spent all of my gold on strawberries, buying a total of 151 of them. Now, in previous playthroughs, I sometimes made the choice to purposely lose the egg hunt. Not this time, baby. Not this time. I'm still riding the adrenaline wave that began when we harvested our parsnips and potatoes. There is adrenaline in my soul. Something something, Cody Rhodes. Uh, yeah, my, my, uh, my point is, I dominated the egg hunt. The other competitors were a complete non-factor. The only things that existed were myself and the eggs. My victory culminated in me receiving the straw hat. Neat. Back on the farm, I plant all of the strawberry seeds before the day ends. We are making so much more progress than I thought we would. Honestly, I'm not that good at this game. I don't know how we have made it to this point. But, like a surfer in Australia, when something unexpected happens, you just have to ride the wave. It's back to basics on day 14 as we start the morning by watering all of our strawberry seeds. I head to the travelling cart to see what's on sale, and looking back on this, I wish I hadn't done that. There were quite a few things in here that I wanted to purchase, but I only had two gold, so all I accomplished was teasing myself. We visit the wizard who teaches us how to read and speak Junimo. We can now donate items to the community center. Yes, I realize that we should have done this on day 15 rather than day 14, but hey, sometimes my priorities get discombobulated. Another round of foraging is on the agenda as I accidentally on purpose continuously ate all of the forage items I had during those days where we had hundreds of crops to water. I sell some of this forage to Pierre, collect a horseradish and a leek from the chest in the mines, give Robin the axe she lost in the forest, and complete the spring forage bundle in the community center. We receive 30 spring seeds for this, which I sell to Pierre. Then it's back to the traveling cart. Yeah, I couldn't resist. I needed to buy the fruit salad so I could give it to Haley for her birthday. I give Leah a jade that she requested as part of a quest, then I give Haley a present that cost me over 2,000 gold. Never let it be said that I don't care about the villagers in this town. Because I do. A lot. I also give Pierre a gift to complete one of the introduction quests that requires you to give a gift to a villager after speaking to all of the villagers. The rest of the day is spent in the mines where we pass out on floor 69. We have a bit of a problemo on day 15. Our energy bar is currently on the floor as a result of us passing out in the mines last night. The good news is it's salmonberry season so we have easy access to energy for the next 4 days. Haley and Emily are having a quarrel over who should clean the couch. Guy like me, I would simply purchase a brand new couch to avoid having to clean the old one, but that's just me. I collect a good few salmon berries around town and in the forest, then I inhale them to get enough energy to be able to water all of my strawberry seeds. I buy two green beans and a cauliflower seed in piers, then surprise surprise it's off to the mines for the rest of the day. We make it down to floor 73 before we pass out. I really need to stop passing out. I finally make two scarecrows on day 16. I do not know why I didn't do this sooner, but it is what it is. We continue our brand new tradition of collecting salmon berries, then returning to the farm to water our strawberries before heading to the mines for the rest of the day. We've got plenty of refined quartz and iron bars at this point, so we really need to get to floor 80 so we can start collecting gold ore. Thankfully, we do manage to get to level 80 just before the day ends, so things are looking really good. We reach level 5 in mining, so I choose the Miner perk, which gives us one extra ore per vein. Can you guess what we do on day 17? If you said, collect salmon berries, water the strawberry seeds, and spend the rest of the day in the mines, you would be absolutely correct. I feel like now is a good time to mention that things will get more interesting soon, I promise. I, I, just, I just bit off more than I can chew with all of these strawberry seeds I bought, so I need to get at least 20 quality sprinklers as soon as possible. We make it down to floor 90 where we obtain the Obsidian Edge Sword. It is with a heavy heart that I cast the Neptune's Glaive to the side. You served me well. Thank you. 
something peculiar happened though. The game straight up wouldn't let me throw the Neptune's Glaive in the trash. Like I literally couldn't do it. Perhaps that is Stardew Valley's way of telling us to treasure the things that we hold dear to us. That the emergence of new things in our lives doesn't mean we need to forget about the old things that are still beautiful. For example, I used to love Pepsi. Absolutely love it. I would guzzle a litre of it every day, which probably wasn't the best choice now that I think about it. But anyway, one day I found a can of Cherry Pepsi. And it was sensational, exquisite, immaculate, other adjectives. Though my fondness for Cherry Pepsi grew stronger, I still retained an appreciation for the normal Pepsi. I don't know where I'm going with this. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, I suppose. Right, day 18. You know how it is. Water as many crops as we can, collect salmon berries, finish watering our crops. Go fishing and catch a smallmouth bass, which I give to Penny to complete the quest she gave us. Give a parsnip to Pam for her birthday. And continue our escapades in the mines. We make it down to floor 98, but I don't want to push my luck too far, so I leave and head back home. I did not make it home, however. I passed out by Linus's tent. It's raining on day 19, which I am very thankful for because salmon berries have stopped growing, so that source of energy is gone. I spent some time in the mines, but I became exhausted on floor 98, so I left. I decided to spend the rest of the day fishing in order to collect the fish we need for the community center. First we head to Leah's cabin, then we move to the beach. I have to say, this was a very nice change of pace compared to the last few days. I feel peaceful. Our strawberries still haven't fully grown on day 20, so that was a bit of a mild annoyance. I grab some diamonds from my chest in the mines and sell them to Clint, then I buy four spaghettis and a beer in the saloon. I give the beer to Shane as a birthday present who thanks me by saying, Why are you bothering me? I want to be alone. Bit rude. We make it down to floor 100 of the mines where we receive a star drop. It reminds me of my favorite thing. Water. I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. Stay hydrated and also hug the people you care about. As I am watering my crops on day 21, I can feel it. That special feeling deep down in my soul. That feeling that lets me know we won't have to water these crops manually for much longer. Somehow, some way, we will make a ton of sprinklers within the next two days. What can I say? I've got that sprinkler sensation. Today wasn't a very interesting day though, we just went to the mines again. We did have a very close call on floor 108 though, where we just barely managed to escape the mines without being knocked out by the bats. AKA, the fart goblins. Our strawberries are finally ready for harvest on day 22. I cannot even begin to describe how happy this made me. It felt like the good old days where you wake up early on a Saturday morning. Everybody else is in bed, so you go downstairs and sit in front of the TV. You watch cartoons while eating the biggest bowl of cereal you've ever made in your life. All is well. I sell most of my strawberries to Pierre and buy some spring crops. I return to my farm to plant these seeds. Then it's time. Up to this point, I've been going through the mines with a copper pickaxe and no backpack upgrades. I think we've used up all of our good luck. We need to wait until we upgrade our pickaxe and buy at least one backpack upgrade before we go any further in the mines. That is something that I will never ever say. We have come way too far to back down now. I steamroll through the mines, every ounce of vile and venom, passion and willpower that runs through my veins has levitated upwards, attaching itself to my skin, pushing me further and further towards my goal. Every time that little voice in the back of my head tells me to give up, I push it to the side, for that voice does not matter to me. What matters is that I make the most of the situation I have found myself in. With a level of dedication flowing through my body that I have not felt in years, I keep repeating one single phrase to myself. I can, I will, I must. I can, I will, I must. The monsters, nay the minor inconveniences could do nothing to stop me as I delved deeper and deeper into the mines. For the last 22 days I have been working on one single story. That story has one ending. I must reach the final floor. I can, I will, and I must finish the story. And that is exactly what I do. I make it to floor 120, 
I obtained the skull key. I am proud. I am happy. But more than anything else, I am exhausted. This segment lasted maybe a minute at the most. I'll have you know I spent around 8 minutes sweating and shaking while making my way to the final floor. To end the day, I bask in the silence of victory as I watch my furnaces smelting the gold ore I have placed within them. On day 23, we keep the momentum going and make 20 quality sprinklers. Hot diggity dog life is good right now, which normally means things are about to go very wrong for me. I make another 4 sprinklers and begin planting the rest of the parsnip seeds we purchased a few days ago. I pretty much went all in on this and ended up realizing that I need another 10 quality sprinklers. I head to the mines and spend most of the day collecting the ores I need, then I return to the farm, make the 10 sprinklers and place them down. I say goodnight to Louie and head to Sleepy Town. Hey, that rhymed! On day 24, I realized that I made a slight mistake when I was planting the strawberry seeds. This has resulted in there being a single vertical line of crops that aren't being watered by our sprinklers. But it's not really a big deal. I head to the flower dance where I purchase the tub of flowers recipe and a rare curl from Pierre. Then I ask Haley to dance. I won't lie, I wasn't paying attention at all this day because I was too busy staring at my phone. I was watching Drew McIntyre vs Sheamus vs Gunther from WrestleMania 39. On day 25, I realized that I have grown to love our little strawberry farm. In fact, I don't want to leave. I feel like a schoolboy on Sunday. It's nearly tomorrow and I don't want to go. But alas, we have work to do. I collect some gems and geodes from my chest in the mines, purchase the first backpack upgrade and an apple tree sapling appears, and plant it on the farm. I donate my gems to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, donate more items to the museum, and ask Clint to crack open a few more geodes. I then ask Clint to upgrade my axe before donating the final couple of items I have to the museum. We've been very busy during the last week or two, so I decide to take a chill pill and spend the rest of the day fishing at the mountain lake. I visit the traveling cart on day 26 where I purchase a lobster, a coconut, a cactus fruit, and a rare seed. I spend some time collecting iron ore in the mines, then I give a daffodil to Pierre for his birthday. Again, I decide to take it easy for the rest of the day and fish at the beach. I also want to catch the legend fish before spring ends, so we need to get to at least level 8 or 9 in fishing really soon. We've got another strawberry harvest on day 27, which is absolutely sensational. I donate a green bean, a cauliflower, and a potato to the community center, then I realize I forgot to bring a parsnip. Even when I'm making decent progress, I still have that scallywag mentality. I sell most of our strawberries to Pierre, then I return to the community center with the parsnip we need, completing the spring crops bundle and unlocking access to the other bundles. I complete the crab pot bundle and donate some fish to the other fishing bundles and I complete the entirety of the boiler room. This means the minecart system will be repaired which should make things a bit more convenient for us. The majority of the day is spent giving Emily a birthday present and going back and forth to the community center with the items we have that can be donated. We reach level 8 in farming so we can start making kegs as soon as we get some oak resin. Day 28, the final day of spring. Our parsnips are ready for harvest, so that's a really nice way to start the day. I donate 5 gold star parsnips to the community center, buy a, a puffer fish, a coffee bean, and a fish stew from the traveling cart, and sell our parsnips to Pier. Just to be on the safe side, I buy 5 of each spring seed. I buy some bait from Willy, and I almost bought the iridium rod, but it cost 7500 gold, so I figured I'd be fine without it. I could just use the fiberglass rod without the lead bobber or any attachment like that. I was wrong. In fact, I wasn't just wrong, I was very wrong. That was the single worst decision I have ever made while playing Stardew Valley. This reality set in very quickly when I attempted to catch the legend fish and I failed. Horribly. But that's okay, right? I mean, we've got our fish stew bumping us up to level 10 in fishing and we've basically got the whole day to catch it. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I, I tried. I really, really tried to catch that beast of a fish, but I just couldn't do it. It embarrassed me at every turn. 
At one point, I began to wonder if I should ever be allowed to touch a fishing rod again after my absolutely flabbergasting attempts at catching the legend. I just wasn't strong enough to catch it. I'm a... I'm a... I, I'm a weak man in its dojo of masculinity. I definitely stole that line, there's no way I made that one up. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure Moist Critical or Penguin Zero said it in the video he did with Voice Over Pete where they eat chicken wings. Anyway, yeah, I failed to catch the legend. This has been a very humbling experience, I must say. It's not exactly how I wanted spring to end, but I mean, you know, like what can you do? Let's just let's just move on to summer. I'm I'm sorry for how that went. All right, we had a decent start with spring, but it's a brand new season. There shall be no lollygagging, no daily dallying, no tomfoolery, and absolutely no form of shenanigans during summer. We need to be serious. I collect my axe from Clint and buy a few summer seeds from Pierre. I didn't notice my inventory was almost full, so I couldn't buy all of them, but I did get 249 melon seeds and everything we need for the community center. I head back to the farm and start planting these seeds. It takes a while, but we do get everything planted. We're still on track to complete the community center around the start of winter too, so things are looking good for us. I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees, taking advantage of our upgraded axe. Day 30 begins with a trip to the mines to collect a red and purple mushroom from a chest. I probably should have moved this chest to my farm, but it, it keeps the day interesting, you know, it keeps me on my toes. We, we need something like this, I'm going to leave it there for another few days maybe. I donate several items to the crafts room, finishing off the summer foraging, exotic foraging, and construction bundles. I also donate a couple of mushrooms to the bounty board bundles. The rest of the day is spent collecting copper ore and iron ore in the mines. I passed out at 2am. In the mines. I need to stop doing that. I start day 31 by chopping down trees. We're going to be doing a lot of tree chopping this month. I need a ton of wood for a coop, a barn, and at least one upgrade for both of them. I also finally move my chest and furnaces in the mines to the farm. I make five tappers and stick them on a few trees so we can get oak resin and maple syrup. We need both of these items for the community center and we also need oak resin to make kegs in the future. Now that I think about it, I should have done this during spring, but oh well. Chopping down trees is next on the agenda, followed by the construction of a preserve jar which I toss a spice berry into. I fully intended on spending the rest of the day fishing, but uh, yeah, I got bored, so I went to sleep. That, that's it for today. Day 32 begins with a quest. Clint de Pooh would like to inspect 35 copper ores. We will collect those for him at some point. I caught a sunfish for the community center as well as a tilapia, a tuna, and a sturgeon. All of these get donated to the community center. I decide to sell some fish and fishing related items to William, then I buy the summer seeds I didn't get on the first day of summer. I make six quality sprinklers and get everything planted and watered. I catch a bream which also gets donated to the community center. I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting copper ore and quartz. I have some horrible news on day 33. I passed out in the mines last night. Again. So I, I woke up with almost no energy. I accidentally swung my pickaxe on my farm so I was exhausted straight away. T this, this is not a day already. I checked the traveling cart and the duck feather and large egg look very tantalizing. And by that I mean we need them for the community center. I do a bit of foraging to find some scrum diddly umptious items that we will... <laughs> Sorry. I do a bit of foraging to find some scrum diddly umptious items that will increase my energy. Then I do a tiny bit of fishing and sell the fish I catch to Willy. With 2000 gold in my pocket, I head to the traveling cart and buy the duck feather and the large egg. Oh wait, no I didn't, because I accidentally bought an octopus. Look, I'm going to be completely honest here, summer did not end up being a good season for me. I didn't realize, but this was the beginning of the darkest timeline. I head to Clint's and show him the 35 copper ores I collected last night to complete his quest. Luckily, the gold I received as a reward for this was just enough for me to be able to afford the egg. I decided to spend the rest of the day chopping down trees until my energy ran out, which didn't take very long at all. But, tomorrow is a new day. 
I'm feeling hopeful. Our spiceberry jam is ready on day 34. I guarantee that it tastes amazing. Like, like there's no way it isn't one of the best jams that has ever been made. I really want to try it now. I collect some fruit from our bat cave and chop down even more trees. I want to say that I won't mention me chopping down trees anymore, but I'm fairly certain I spent a good portion of summer chopping down trees, so I'll, I'll play it by ear. If the only thing I did on any given day was chop down trees, then I'll mention it, but otherwise my lips are sealed. I donate a couple of items to the museum, sell a few minerals to Clinty Winty, and finally repair the broken bridge at the beach. Again, this is something I should have done during spring, but this is a learning experience for me. Alright, I am legitimately surprised I've even made it this far. Speaking of learning experiences, I tried to catch the crimson fish. This is one of the legendary fish. I thought I would be more than capable of catching this fish. I've done it many, many times in the past. I was wrong. I could not catch it. Also, spoiler alert, I completely forgot to come back here at any point during the rest of summer, so we never caught the crimson fish. I'm gonna have to do a 200 days video in the future. This is, this is just embarrassing at this point. Any whomst, I donate a few items to the community center, then I spend the rest of the day chopping down... Okay, no, not saying that. Uh, let's just move on to the next day. I have an announcement to make on day 35. If there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I do not get nervous. Okay, no, I'm, I'm lying. I do. Quite often, actually. My point is, my nerves are slowly starting to go through the roof every time I go to the traveling cart and the red cabbage seeds aren't being sold. We need that for the community center. If we don't get them, then this whole thing falls apart and I'm guaranteed to fail at least two of my goals. I become a good Samaritan and donate a couple of items to the museum to calm my nerves. I also collect the melon and starfruit seeds we received as rewards for a donation so far. I sell a few items to Clint and we don't have enough to ask him to upgrade our axe. That is unfortunate. I sell a few of those melon seeds to Pierre to reach exactly 5,000 gold, then I return to Clint and ask him to upgrade our axe. I spend the rest of the day collecting iron ore. And I actually went to sleep instead of passing out in the mines this time. On day 36, I head to the mines to do some fishing. I catch an ice pip, which is good because we can throw this into the soup at the Luau later this month. I also catch a ghost fish for the community center. I spent some time fishing at the mountain lake, then I head back to the farm and throw most of the fish I caught today into the shipping bin. Some radishes and peppers are ready for harvest on day 37, which is, you know, nice. I make a few generous donations to the community center, even more generous donations to the museum, collect my axe from Clint and ask him to crack open some geodes. The items we received from these geodes get donated immediately, then it's back to the farm to throw pretty much our entire inventory into the shipping bin. Next, I chop down the log that's blocking the entrance to the secret woods. This is an absolute game changer. Actually, no. No, it's not. I, I, I don't know why I said that. But we can get hardwood here, we can collect fiddlehead ferns, and we can catch the wood skip. Also, I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but I've been smelting copper, iron, and gold ores and quartz in our furnaces the whole time. Continuing my quest to become Santa Claus, I deliver more items to the community center. We're actually making decent progress on the whole community center thing. I'm surprised. Like, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm really surprised I haven't missed anything so far. I catch a rainbow trout, then I grow tired of the town river. I simply do not vibe with its aesthetic. So I head to the mountain lake instead. Something whimsical happened here near the end of the day. I became absolutely mesmerized by the scenery here. I decided to pause for a while and simply take in this moment. Then I started walking back to the farm. This is the first time in a long time I haven't been in a rush to get home at night, so I was finally able to appreciate the nighttime energy of Pelican Town. I want to move here. In, in, like, in real life, I mean, I want to be here. Give me a little cabin with a fireplace and a little garden where I can grow some vegetables. Look, it's the little things in life that matter. Two oak resins are ready to collect on day 38. I donate one of these to the community center and then I make a troubling discovery. I missed Gus's birthday. Th this was rough. It completely ruined my day. Gus is an absolute gentleman. I cannot believe I forgot about him. Today is Maru's birthday though, so I give her a strawberry. 
So that kind of cancels out my little kerfuffle with Gus's birthday, right? I ask Robin to build a coop on her farm, catch a couple of fish, and empty my inventory into the bin of shipping. Some poppies and radishes are fully grown on day 39. I don't care about the radishes. The poppies, though, these are huge. And by huge, I mean we need one for the community center. I collect the ice pip from my chest and head to the luau. The fish was enough to get the best reaction from the governor, earning a tasty 120 friendship points with the villagers. I know I didn't do much today, but it was nice. Sometimes you need a lazy day. A actually, I've had a few of those so far. Uh, but, uh... Our melons still aren't ready on day 40, but some of our other crops are, so I'll, I'll take that. I collect two maple syrups at the bus stop, make a bee house, and donate a few items to the community center. At this point, I'm still feeling good about how our community center progress is going. But if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I am a certified jinxer. Like, it is baffling how often I jinx things. It's at the point where I think very carefully about whether I want to vocalize something or not. But I'm going to vocalize this. We will complete the community center before the end of winter. Uh, uh, oh, okay. I, I shouldn't have said that. That's, that's going to backfire. Oh boy. Anyway, I sell my crops and forage items to Pierre and buy 25 wheat seeds. I head to the traveling cart and as always, red cabbage seeds are not being sold. That's okay. We have like 20 more opportunities between now and the end of winter. It'll be okay. I, I hope it'll be okay. I make a keg and throw a cherry into it, then I plant our wheat seeds. Day 41 is an absolutely marvelous day. First of all, it's raining, which means we can go fishing and catch the red snapper, which we need for the community center. As well as this, our melons are ready for harvest. I do some foraging at the beach, sell this forage to Willy and catch the aforementioned red snapper. I donate this and some melons, sell my melons to Pierre and buy 500 melon seeds. I ask Clinty Bear to upgrade my pickaxe, then I spend the rest of the day planting our melon seeds. Even after making some more sprinklers, we still don't have enough to cover all 500 melon seeds, but I did manage to get 370 of them planted. We reach level 9 in farming and unlock the ability to craft iridium sprinklers, so that will be handy in the future. We also reached level 10 in farming, so I picked the perk that causes crops to grow 10% faster. Mother sends us a lovely pink cake on day 42. Thank you. I harvest some blueberries and visit the traveling cart. Unsurprisingly, the one thing I need still isn't being sold. I did buy two complete breakfasts, though. They give a plus two to farming, so I'll eat those during fall when we're about to harvest a ton of pumpkins. I also bought a walleye which I donate to the community center along with a blueberry. I head to Robins and buy some wood and stone and ask her to build a barn on her farm. It's off to Marnie's next where I buy some hay and welcome four chickens into the family. Joyce, Tato, Boo and Sully will make fine additions to our farm. I say hello to our new chicken family, spend some time clearing out more space on the farm and buy three bean hot pots, ten coffees and ten spaghettis in the saloon. I donate 10 hay to the community center just before the day ends. Our hops are ready for harvest on day 43, so we hop right on that. Do you, uh, do you, uh, I, was too, I, I was too early to enter Clint's, sorry. I was too early to enter Clint's shop, so I just stood there doing nothing. Then the shop opened up, so I went in and collected my pickaxe. I decided to spend some time collecting gold ore. Also, I hate when this happens. You go down a ladder in the mines and you literally cannot move because another ladder is blocking your way. I see gold ore and fire quartz which made this even worse because I couldn't get to them. I was a bit miffed about this, I won't lie to you. Eventually I ran into a monster only floor so I left and went to the ice floors instead so I could get iron ore and coal. The crop fairy paid us a visit during the night though so maybe our good luck is coming back. Day 44 is a big collection day. I collect gold bars, honey, melons, hops, and wheat. I sell most of our melons to Pierre and donate the honey and wheat to the community center. It's back to the mines once again for even more iron ore and coal. Once again, I am putting the knowledge I have acquired thus far to use. And by that I mean I don't pass out in the mines anymore. I decide to take a bit of a risk on day 45. 
I plant some melon seeds and one starfruit seed and cover them in the speed grow we received as a reward for completing the spring crops bundle in the community center. Truth be told, I do not know if this will work out. I'm hoping they'll be ready around the last day of summer. But there is a very real possibility I just wasted those melon seeds and the starfruit seed. I head to Marnie's and buy two cows. Please welcome Butters and Cody to the family. I make a mayonnaise machine and I realize that my farm looks like a complete mess right now. I know. I won't lie to you, it's probably going to stay this way for a while. I think it'll be during winter when I finally work on making my farm look aesthetically pleasing. Piers is still closed on Wednesdays. I should know that by now. I ask Robin to upgrade our coop and that's it for today. I start day 46 by taking a look at our financial situation. It's not looking good. We haven't even reached a total of 200,000 gold, so we really need to step up our game during fall. I'm not talking 100% effort, I'm talking 101% effort. I pay a visit to my animals to make sure their vibes are good, throw some items into my shipping bin, donate a corn to the community center, and buy 31 radish seeds from Pierre. I know radish seeds are a bit of an odd choice right now, but we need gold and this is the only crop we can get that is guaranteed to grow before the end of summer. A bottle of wine is ready on day 47, so we collect that. Moment of truth time? Will the traveling cart be selling red cabbage seeds? If you said yes, then I appreciate that, but no. No, they're not being sold. I did buy a common mushroom for the community center though, and I bought a duck. I decide to call it clay. I donate the wine and common mushroom, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting minerals and copper ore. Day 48 is another mini sale day. The small things add up, alright, it's the little things that count. I've said that before, I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it to justify me having mini sale days. We will reach 1 million gold, alright, that's my point. It, it needs to happen, I can't fail that goal. Somehow, some way, I will do it. Probably. I donate two dwarf scrolls to the museum, crack open some geodes, ask Clint to upgrade our watering can, and donate more items to the museum. Then I went to sleep. On day 49, the traveling cart isn't selling what we need. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit anxious now. I decide to cool my nerves by heading to the mines. I've got a plan this time, and it's a good one. I go down to floor 70, then immediately go down to floor 71 and collect the iron ore there. Then I return to the surface, then back down to floor 70 and 71, over and over again. I used the iron ore we got from this to make bombs. Then I head down to floor 115 and make my way to floor 118 before returning to the surface. All the while using bombs to blow up clusters of rocks along the way. The whole point of this was to get as many geodes as we can. After a few minutes of doing this, I emerged with one Omni Geode, one Frozen Geode, and one Magma Geode. I was... I was disappointed with this result. Maybe it wasn't a good plan after all, now that I look back on it. We did get a good bit of gold ore though, so that kinda made up for it. I collect my watering can from Clint on day 50, crack open the geodes we have, and ask him to upgrade our watering can again. Slowly but surely, our museum is starting to fill up. Very slowly, admittedly, but we're getting there. We did get 9 pumpkin seeds as a reward though, so that was a nice bonus. I finally ask Robin to build a silo on our farm, then I spend the rest of the day doing some landscaping. We reach level 6 in foraging, so we can finally start making lightning rods. Our radishes are ready on day 51. The entire day is spent in the mines collecting iron ore. I'm beginning to realize how much I've said that during this video. Sorry. It's going to happen again, but sorry. I passed out right beside my bed. On day 52, I almost made a mistake I have made multiple times so far. I was on my way to Piers when I realized it's Wednesday. I throw my inventory into the shipping bin instead and donate a duck egg to the community center. I also give Willy a diamond for his birthday. I have fallen behind on our friendships, but I will never forget about him. I collected my watering can from Clint and then I went to sleep. I, I was very lazy during summer, I don't know what I was thinking. Honestly, I blame Easter. I ate two cream eggs on Easter Sunday and I felt like a trash bag full of soggy cornflakes. I, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Let's just move. Let's just, let let's move on very quickly. It's finally time to harvest our melons on day 53. 
Each and every melon I picked up provided me with a slight dopamine boost. By the end of it, I felt like someone who is really happy. I, I'm not I'm not good with metaphors. I'm, let me think, let me think. I felt like Harold and Kumar when they finally get their burgers in White Castle. That, that might be a bad reference. Actually, I don't know how many people have seen Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Look, my point is I was very happy. My happiness reached new heights when I sold those melons to Pier and ended up with 120,000 gold. I asked Robin to upgrade our barn, purchase 75 corn seeds, buy 50 coal, and ask Clint to upgrade our pickaxe. I also finally purchased everything in the vault room. That's two of the rooms in the community center completed. And the bus will be unlocked tomorrow, so we're doing very nicely for ourselves, which is, you know, nice. I went to sleep because I was afraid I would spend all of my gold if I stayed awake for the rest of the day. The rest of our melons are ready on day 54. I plant our corn seeds and use the quality fertilizer we received from the community center to increase the chance of getting gold star corn. I head to Calico Desert for the first time for one reason and one reason only. To catch a sandfish. I sell some items to Pierre but I keep some gold star melons for energy. Then I donate the sandfish, which means we only have one fish left to donate. The tiger trout. But we have to wait until fall before we can catch it. I also buy some hay, a milk pail, and shears from Marnie. Day 55. The penultimate day of summer. I decide to ship some of the items I've been keeping so far that I don't really need. With that being said, I guarantee I'll end up regretting this choice in the future when it turns out I did actually need some of those items, but we'll deal with that should it happen. I collect my gold pickaxe from Clint and head to the desert where I enter the Skull Cavern. I did alright here, I, I suppose. Floor 9 was a monster only floor and it was full of those Pepper Rex monsters, so that was not enjoyable at all. We didn't even get a dinosaur egg from them. I eventually made it down to the next floor, but things only got worse as floor 13 was another monster only floor. And we got knocked out. And we lost our obsidian edge sword. Uh, okay, that, that was actually worst case scenario. I, I don't know what to do now. Um, we're either going to have to use the item recovery service in the adventurer's guild to get it back, or we're going to have to buy a new sword, and I really don't want to spend any gold. How did we go from a decent spring to a disgustingly bad summer? On day 56, Mr... Uh-oh. Mr... Mr. Key? Mr. Chi? Look, I'm gonna go with Mr. Key. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, there's no definitive way of saying his name, so... Mr. Key challenges us to make it to at least level 25 of the Skull Caverns. Yeah, don't talk to me. I, I, I don't want anything to do with the Skull Caverns after yesterday. Something good did happen today though. Our one starfruit grew, so that was nice. I sell most of our melon seeds to Pierre just so we can buy as many pumpkin seeds as possible tomorrow. I head to the traveling cart and surprise surprise, no red cabbage seeds. At this point I was completely over summer, so I did something I have never ever done before. I skipped the dance of the Moonlight Jellies Festival and I went straight to sleep. So that was a weird season. Ups and downs. But listen... Tomorrow is the dawn of a new season. I can feel it in my soul. Fall will be our best season so far. Day 57. It's time for a new era in our adventure. This is the single most important season during this video so far. We need to be on our A game. Zero mistakes, always operating at 13.8% brain power. A little shopping spree takes place at Piers as I buy a few of each seed, along with 100 cranberry seeds and 300 pumpkin seeds. I donate a large egg to the community center, then it's time for some fishing. We're going for a legendary fish here, the angler fish. Now if there's one thing you need to know about this fish, it's that it is arguably the easiest legendary fish to catch. So I was very, very relieved when I actually did catch it. If I failed to catch the anglerfish, then I would have just ended the video right here. I do a bit of fishing at the river and catch a tiger trout, then I head to Willy's to sell the fish we have. I donate the tiger trout to the community center, completing the final fishing bundle. Back on the farm, I get to work on planting all of the seeds we bought. I was able to get all of the cranberry seeds and half of the pumpkin seeds planted before the day ends. 
The morning of day 58 is spent planting the rest of her seeds. I throw some of the items we have been keeping for no reason into her shipping bin, and I finally plant the last of her pumpkin seeds. The special orders board has been built in town. We can either collect 100 bones for Gunther, or we can collect 80 hardwood for Robin. I decide to go with Gunther's special order, but spoiler alert, I completely forgot about it. I donate some bone artifacts to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, and donate the resulting items to the museum. Day 59 begins with a visit to our bat cave to collect some fruit that we don't really need. But our apple tree has produced three apples, so I collect those. I milk my cows and receive a large milk. This is good, we need that for the community centre. I head to Marnie's and buy a goat. I decide to name this goat after my favourite Grand Theft Auto character, Fersetti. Looking back on this, I wish I had called the goat Leota instead, as in Ray Leota. He was genuinely such a fantastic actor. Willie gives us a copper pan, which means we can do some panning. I don't know if we'll do that at any point before the end of winter, to be honest, it's always too much hassle trying to find a panning spot. Actually, never mind, I found a panning spot. And we received 6 gold ore and an omni geode. Okay, maybe we will do some panning during this video. I buy some salads in the saloon, donate 3 apples and a large milk to the community center and head to the Adventurers Guild. The lava katana costs 25,000 gold. Right. Okay, I, I wanted to buy it, but I don't have the capacity for that. So instead, I use the item recovery service to get my obsidian edge sword back. I also collect a skeleton mask as a reward for defeating a certain number of skeletons. I don't know how many it was. I'm going to say 17,000. I feel like that's a good number to, to say. We're also not doing too bad when it comes to the monster eradication goals. I thought we'd be in a much worse position with those. I collect a hazelnut at the bus stop and immediately donate it to the community center, completing the fall foraging bundle. Marlin sends us our obsidian edge sword on day 60. I water the single vertical line of crops that aren't being watered by our sprinklers, still, and collect a pomegranate in our bat cave. This pomegranate is then donated. I take the bus to the desert and spend the rest of the day in the skull cavern. Our goal in the Skull Cavern is primarily to collect as many Omni Geodes as we can. It's time for us to donate a total of 60 items to the museum so we can unlock the sewers and meet Krobus. We make it down to floor 21 before the day ends. I'll get better at going through the Skull Caverns. At, at some point during this month, we're going to get to at least floor 50. I head to Clint's on day 61 and ask him to crack open our Geodes, and the items we receive are of course donated to the museum. We're going to be doing this quite a bit during fall. The traveling cart is still working against us. At this point, I'm starting to believe that the traveling cart is an undercover operative who has been given the mission of making sure we can't complete the community center. That's just the vibe I'm getting here. It's back to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day where we do slightly better than we did yesterday. We receive some cactus seeds from a chest on floor 18. These aren't the seeds we're looking for. Things were going very well. We made it down to floor 34. Then we got knocked out. I was legitimately horrified when this happened. I was even more horrified when I saw that we lost our Omni Geodes. I make a beeline for the Adventures Guild and ask Merlin to retrieve those Omni Geodes. And he did it for free. Okay, maybe this wasn't such a bad day after all. We need money and our crops won't be ready for another few days, so I toss some items into the shipping bin at the end of the day. Mr. Key sends us 10,000 gold for reaching floor 25 in the Skull Cavern, and Marlin sends us our Omni Geodes on day 62. What a delightful start to the day. I sell some goods to Pierre, buy some wood and stone in Robins and ask her to upgrade our coop. But we can't afford it. So I ask Clint to open up our Geodes and make some donations to the museum. We're getting really close to that 60 item mark. Some items get thrown into the shipping bin, other items get sold to Clint, and we return to Robins. I have decided that I want to upgrade my barn instead, so I buy the wood and stone I need, then I realize I don't have enough gold for the barn upgrade. I, I, I don't know what's happening to me, my brain cells have gone on vacation. I decide to go to sleep. Not a good day. Our cranberries are ready for harvest on day 63. Finally some good news. I head to the traveling cart and buy a garlic seed. This will come in handy when we get to Ginger Island. Or if we get to Ginger Island. Like I said, I believe the traveling cart is a malicious entity. 
their left hand gives you what you want, their right hand stabs you in the back, that kind of thing. I made a seed maker and threw a piece of wheat into it to get wheat seeds. Again, we'll use this when we get to Ginger Island. After that round of dilly-dallying, we head to Piers and sell our cranberries, then we finally ask Robin to upgrade our barn. I donate an eggplant to the community centre, purchase 25 coffees and salads in the saloon, and head to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day. Again, Omni Geodes are our main focus here, but I'll be very happy if we can get some Iridium Ore and maybe a Prismatic Shard too if we're lucky. Things go pretty well as I make bombs as often as I can to blow up big clusters of rocks. Not only does this help us find ladders, but we often get one or two Omni Geodes from doing this too. We get a dinosaur egg on floor 33, not just once, but twice, and it was very nice. We get a rabbit's foot on floor 48, which we need for the community center. We pass out on floor 56. You know what? I'm kind of proud of myself for that. I toss a dinosaur egg into the incubator in our coop on the morning of day 64. Then it's off the cleanse to crack open our geodes. This was a mistake. See, I only need to donate 4 or 5 items to the museum at the most to unlock the sewers, so we would have been better off trading those geodes for artifact troves in the desert. I donate the dinosaur egg and the one item we received from our omni geodes to the museum. We only need 3 more items at this point because we've donated a total of 57. Gus wants 2 dozen eggs. We can actually do that one pretty easily, so we'll accept that. I head to the mines and spend the rest of the day collecting coal and iron ore. I want to make some more bombs which we'll use in the skull caverns at some point in the future. On day 65 I donate the rabbit's foot we picked up in the skull cavern. I ask Clint to crack open some frozen geodes and receive one item which we can donate to the museum. It's off to the skull caverns for the rest of the day once again. We get a prismatic shard on floor 37 so today is already a successful day. Things were looking a bit dodgy a short while later though, so I used a warp totem to get back to the farm. I'm not taking any chances. We've got a prismatic shard in our inventory, so if we get knocked out, I guarantee we would have lost that. I would not have been happy about that. Dare I even say I would have been unhappy about that. Our corn is ready on day 66, so we harvest them. I head to Clint and ask him to open up one geode. That is because I didn't realize my inventory was already full. Now you may have noticed that it is Wednesday. Can you guess which shop I was heading towards? Yeah, it happened again. I donate 5 gold star corn to the community center, completing the quality crops bundle. I toss the eggs in my inventory into the fridge in the saloon and go back to Clint's to open up the rest of my geodes. Like I said, I really should have traded those for artifact troves because we got nothing we could donate to the museum from them. When I head back to my farm, I realize something important. I have been diversifying my interests for far too long. I have been taking on too many responsibilities, and I have been trying to do too many things at once. So, here's the plan, alright? Here's what we're going to be focusing on for the next few weeks. The mines for coal and iron ore, the skull cavern for omni geodes, and the secret woods for hardwood. If we have any free time, we'll spend it clearing out space on our farm. We also need to purchase a pig and hopefully get red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart during the next week or two. Alright, let's continue. On day 67, I head to the mines to collect iron ore and coal so we can make bombs. I then head to the saloon and buy some coffee and salads. I sell a couple of diamonds to Clint, then I venture to the desert and exchange my prismatic shard for the galaxy sword. The rest of the day is spent in the Skull Cavern. See, we're sticking with our plan. Fall is going to be a good season for us. I mean, it has to be, because if it isn't, then we're going to fail all of our goals, which isn't good at all. We find a prismatic shard on floor 50, so I believe we are back in our good luck era. Yeah, we got another prismatic shard on floor 65, so we are officially back in the good graces of Lady Luck and Father Fortune. I leave the Skull Cavern at around 1am and trade my Omni Geodes for two artifact troves and one desert warp totem. Day 68 begins with a cranberry harvest session. I also collect 9 iridium bars that have finished smelting. I sell our crops to Pierre, then I head to the traveling cart. Our luck is good, but not good enough. No red cabbage seeds. But I do buy a battery pack. I collect some hardwood in the secret woods, then I crack open my artifact troves in Clint's. I donate 4 items to the museum, including a prismatic shard, which means we have donated 60 items in total. Alright, we actually did it. 
Cool. Of course, we still have to get Krobus up to 10 hearts before the end of winter, but let's just enjoy this moment while we can. I was very tempted to sell a Prismatic Shard to Clint so we could get closer to being able to afford the Iridium upgrade for a pickaxe, but I kept it. Not for any reason in particular, no, I'm just selfish. I do, however, return to Clint's a short time later and ask him to upgrade our watering can to gold quality. I was so excited about finally meeting Krobus tomorrow that I went straight to bed. Day 69 begins with a visit from Gunther who gives us the key to the sewers. Thank you, Gunther. I'm going to be completely honest, I can't see Gunther in Stardew Valley without thinking of Gunther from WWE. Like, for some reason, my brain sees them as the same person even though they look nothing alike. Or maybe they are the same person. I've never seen both of them in the same room. There's something for you to think about. Versetti has no milk right now. I complete the fall crops bundle in the community center and sell my crappie whoppies to Pierre. Our bank account is looking pretty tasty right now. I buy 200 pumpkin seeds, then I use the key Gunther gave us earlier to unlock the sewer. I meet Krobus for the first time. I'm happy. I buy a void egg and 10 void essence and I give Krobus a pumpkin which he loves. In Marnie's ranch I buy a sheep and call it Bailey. I also buy a pig and call it Champa. It's off to the secret woods to collect hardwood and I think I'm going to stop mentioning us collecting hardwood from now on. I plant our pumpkin seeds and that's it for today. Day 70 is a corn and pumpkin harvest day. You know, I'm actually glad I didn't get all of our pumpkin seeds planted on the first day of fall because having two pumpkin harvest days in a row makes me feel tremendously happy. I say hello to our animals and collect some eggs from our coop, then it's time for our daily visit to Krobus. Again, we give him a pumpkin and purchase 10 void essence. Some of you may be wondering why I keep buying these. In order for Krobus to move in with us, we need to give him the void ghost pendant. You can get this from the Desert Trader in exchange for 200 Void Essence. Monsters in the Skull Cavern can also drop the Pendant, but I don't want to take any chances, so I'm trying to get 200 Void Essence as soon as I can. The Traveling Cart isn't selling the Red Cap- Okay, look, I'm sure you get the point by now. I sell some items to Pierre, making sure to hold on to 20 Gold Star Pumpkins for Krobus. I purchase another 150 Pumpkin Seeds, then I ask Robin to upgrade her house. I plant our pumpkin seeds, then I try to go to sleep, but Louie has taken over the bed, so I just sit in the chair and wait for him to move. On day 71, I pay a visit to Krobus. I know it's only been like three days since I met him for the first time, but I feel like we're good friends now, so I think it's time to give him a nickname. For the rest of this video, I will be referring to him as Mr. K. I know that sounds formal, but it comes from a place of familiar affection. I throw my eggs into the fridge in the saloon, buy some coffee, collect my watering can from Clint and ask him to upgrade my pickaxe. We finally get a large goat milk on day 72. I wanted to donate this but we can't go into town because the Stardew Valley Fair is being set up. I did not know this at the time, but going to that fair would end up being the single worst choice I have ever made in my entire life. I scavenge my chest to find 9 items to use in our Grange display, then I head to the fair. Honestly, our Grange display isn't that bad, at all. You see that item in the top right? It's called Neptunite, and it's worth the same as a diamond in terms of its score during this little competition. I watch with bated breath as Lewis takes a gander at the stalls. Thankfully, we came in first place, so we receive 1,000 star tokens. I bet all 1,000 of these tokens on green, and I lose all of my tokens. Okay, I, I, I can see where this is going. I play the slingshot game and receive 144 tokens. I bet these tokens on green and I actually win this time. Alright, let's keep the momentum going. I bet 288 tokens this time on green again and I lose them all. Again. I very seriously considered leaving the festival at this point, but I stayed strong. I played the fishing game and received a delicious 492 tokens. Feeling on top of the world, I played the game again, receiving another 288 tokens. At this point I was feeling pretty good, so I bet all of my tokens on green and won. Now we've got 1560 tokens. I only bet 440 tokens this time, which was a good choice because I lost them. I played a slingshot game again, then I decided to go all in. 1274 tokens on green. The Wii lands on orange. Alright, listen, I'm done. I, like, I... I can't deal with this right now. Day 73 begins with a cranberry harvest. 
I really, really needed that after the kerfuffle that occurred yesterday. I almost tried to walk into Piers, but I realized it's Wednesday at the very last second, so I'm learning. In, in fact, let's be honest, this whole thing has been a learning experience for me. I've definitely said that before during this video, but hey, that just shows how committed I am to learning. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, let's just, let's just move on. I donate the large goat milk to the community center, unlocking the greenhouse. The wizard would like us to defeat a prismatic slime and bring him the prismatic jelly it drops. I collect my iridium pickaxe from Clint, and to be honest, I am very surprised I actually managed to fully upgrade my pickaxe. I make a mackie roll and a fried egg in her kitchen, toss her crops into the shipping bin, complete Gus's special order, purchase some food items in the saloon, and donate the mackie roll and fried egg to the community center. It's off to the mines to track down the prismatic slime. The plan is simple. Go down to floor 5, look for the prismatic slime, return to the surface, go back down to level 5, rinse and repeat until the prismatic slime appears. At approximately 1.30 in the morning, I am proud to announce that we have caught and compromised to a permanent end the prismatic slime. In slightly more embarrassing news, I passed out beside my bed. Gus sends us a mini fridge on day 74. Thank you, Gustavo. I make my way to the desert and purchase 20 beet seeds, 75 starfruit seeds, and 75 deluxe speed grow. I deliver the prismatic jelly to Rasmodius. Then it's time to set up our greenhouse. I made two iridium sprinklers, but I'm waiting for some gold bars to finish smelting, so, <laughs> smelting, <laughs> to finish smelting so I can make four more. In the meantime, I get the ground prepared for our starfruit and beet seeds. I also used the deluxe speed girl we bought earlier. I collect the gold bars, make four more iridium sprinklers and place them in the greenhouse. Some of you may be wondering why I planted beet seeds. That will be revealed in approximately six days. Rasmodius sends us the crafting recipe for monster musk on day 75. This is a big deal. If we make a monster musk and consume it, it will increase the amount of monsters that appear in the mines and the skull cavern. We have enough slime and bat wings to make three monster musks. So if we drink one and head to the skull cavern, more monsters will appear. Purple slimes, serpents and mummies have a chance to drop red cabbage seeds, so I think we could get those seeds by doing this. Right, never mind, the traveling cart has red cabbage seeds for sale, so we're good. I pay a visit to Mr. K and buy 10 void essence. Again, I think I'm going to stop mentioning the whole Void Essence thing, but rest assured, I will put everything I have into collecting 200 of them. I ask Clint to upgrade our hoe, then I head to the mines. I consume a Monster Musk and spend the rest of the day going through the mines, defeating the copious number of dust sprites that spawn on almost every floor. Monster-only floors are also beneficial right now because of how many slimes show up. This will help us with the monster eradication goals. I plant the red cabbage seed just before the day ends. A baby lizard has appeared on day 76. I decide to call it Peep. I took it easy today, I just cleared out some space on the farm. Our bat cave is filled to the brim on day 77, so I collect the fruit and sell it to Pier. Also, just in case anyone is wondering, I have been collecting hardwood every day for the last couple of weeks. We need 200 hardwood to repair Willie's boat once we finish the community center. And we need another 150 hardwood to upgrade our house. I give a pumpkin to Mr. K and throw some more items into our shipping bin. Again, today was a pretty laid back day as I just cleared out the farm some more. I decided to use bombs to take down some trees later that night and it actually worked pretty well. That might be the best way for us to clear out the farm from now on. Evelyn pays us a visit on day 78 and gives us the garden pot. That reminds me, hug your grandparents. Spend time with them. Have a cup of tea and a biscuit with them. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I harvest the cranberries and corn that have grown, toss a void egg into the incubator, and continue our quest to bankrupt Pier. I collect my hoe from Clint, then I ask him to upgrade it again. I do something that is long overdue, quite frankly. I ask Robin to build us a shed. I really hope we can get Mr. K to 10 hearts before winter ends. Like, like I'm genuinely going to be so upset if we can't do it. I also buy some coffee in the saloon. Shane sends us a plate of pepper poppers on day 79. Thank you, I guess. I, I haven't spoken to you since spring, but yeah, thank you. We really need our pig to produce a truffle for us. Or find the truffle. I know pigs don't actually make the truffles themselves, they just dig it up out of the ground. Alright, well our pig literally just found a truffle, so we're good. 
Our beets are ready for harvest, which means today just got a lot more exciting. I collect certain items from my chest, throw a battery pack into the power box in the tunnel, pick up Linus's basket, give Linus his basket, toss a rainbow shell into a box at the railroad, put 10 beets into the fridge in Lewis's house. Okay, that sentence was way too long. I'm out of breath. Let me just... Give me one second. Willie wants 100 pieces of bug meat, so we'll do that for him. I sell some items to Pierre, donate a truffle to the bounty board bundle, and check my fortune. The spirits are very displeased. This means we have the worst luck possible today. Alright, that kind of ruins some plans I had. I don't feel safe going to the Skull Cavern today after seeing that. I harvest a sweet gem berry and give it to the old Master Cannoli statue in the secret woods. I receive a star drop in return. After visiting Mr. K, I teleport to the desert and put a solar essence into the dragon skeleton's mouth. Day 80 is what I believe to be the final pumpkin harvest day. Hopefully it isn't, but we're harvesting a lot of pumpkins today, so I won't be too upset if it is the final one. Yeah, it, it happened again. I only have myself to blame, honestly. I need to start paying attention to what day it is. I head to the desert because I want to go into the casino in Sandy Shop, but I forgot to click the casino membership card, so I have to go all the way back to my farm. I pick up the card, pay another 500 gold to go to the desert again, and finally enter the casino. I spend my gold on 200 key coins and start spinning. I'm not going to waste your time here. Long story short, I lost all of my coins. It's back to the mines for the rest of the day to collect iron ore and defeat dust sprites. I blow up some more trees at the end of the day. Day 81 is another pumpkin harvest day. Sweet. We're doing really well in terms of our finances after selling our crops to Pier. I ask Robin to upgrade our shed and make some tree fertilizer. The hardwood we get from the secret woods is enough for what we need, but I want to speed up our hardwood collecting process. I plant some mahogany tree seeds and sprinkle some tree fertilizer on them. Allow me to bestow some knowledge on you all for a moment. A tree sapling has five growth stages. Every tree sapling will advance by one stage of growth each night if you put tree fertilizer on it. It then takes two more days for it to reach the final stage. However, when it comes to mahogany seeds, tree fertilizer results in a 60% chance of the mahogany seed advancing to the next stage each night. So, I reckon these seeds will be fully grown within 6 to 10 days. Our starfruit is ready on day 82. I forgot about this seed after we harvested the beets a few days ago, so this was a nice surprise. I buy a garlic at the traveling cart, harvest our corn, and spend the day going through the lower levels of the mines. Because we need bug meat for Willy's special order. Yeah, I'm surprised I remembered that special order, to be honest. Our final cranberry harvest session takes place on day 83. As well as this, our red cabbage has grown. I wanted to go to the community center, but the Spirits Eve festival is being set up. So I pay a visit to Mr. K and buy a star drop from him. I'm getting slightly nervous when it comes to getting him to 10 hearts. He's really close to 3 hearts now, and his birthday is the first of winter, so that'll bump him up to 6 hearts. He might even be close to 7 hearts at that point, actually. So what I need to do is make sure I talk to him every day during winter and give him 2 pumpkins every week. I could probably unlock the cinema and watch a movie with him too if I really need to. We'll see what happens. I spend some time lollygagging in the mines, collecting bug meat for Willy. At night time, I head to the Spirits E Festival and buy the Rare Crow and the Jack O' Lantern recipe. I also make my way through the maze and collect the Golden Pumpkin at the end. I drop off the 100 bug meat Willy asked for just before the day ends. Versetti, or goat, gave birth during the night. See, now I find this hard to believe because I only have one goat. So, unless some sort of immaculate conception has occurred, I fail to see how this is possible. Regardless, I decide to call the baby goat AJ Styles. Please come back to WWE. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I miss him so much. I just want him to come back. Another animal has shown up on our farm on day 84. A void chicken has appeared. I call this chicken a Tem. I give a pumpkin to Mr. K as is tradition, then I take a look at our gold. I think we can make it to a total of 1 million gold. The main things we're going to be focusing on during winter are collecting the golden walnuts on Ginger Island and getting Krobus to move in with us, so we should have plenty of time to plant starfruit and make money from that. So, we're good. 
all goes well, we should be able to complete all of our goals. I finally buy the last backpack upgrade. I completely forgot about this. I got so used to having two rows of inventory that it didn't even cross my mind to buy this upgrade until now. I purchase the catalogue and 200 cranberry seeds and I donate the red cabbage to the community centre. The only items we need now are a nautilus shell, a snow yam and a crocus. And they're all exclusive to winter so it's pretty much guaranteed that we're going to finish the community centre really soon. I hope I didn't just jinx it. Like I said before, I am a professional jinxer, so I may have just ruined everything by saying that. I head to Robin's and buy some crafting recipes for different flooring. I plant more mahogany seeds and sprinkle tree fertilizer on them, then I spend the rest of the day turning our shed into a storage area. It was going pretty well, but then I ran out of wood, so I went to Robin's and bought two and a half stacks of wood. It takes a lot of time and a lot of going back and forth between our shed and our chess, but we made some decent progress on it. This was a nice way to spend the last day of fall. I feel optimistic going into winter. Day 85, aka the first day of winter, begins with a quick trip to our storage shed to drop off some eggs. I bump into the shadow figure at the bus stop, then I pay a visit to Mr. K. But this visit isn't like the others. No, today is a very special occasion. It's his birthday. I give him a pumpkin which pushes him up to six hearts. Nice. Linus and Demetrius have special orders for us. I decide to accept the special order from Linus which requires us to fish trash out of the water. Next, it's donation time. I hand in an ancient seed and receive an ancient seed and the crafting recipe for ancient seeds as rewards. I collect my hoe from Clint, then I visit the beach to do some foraging. We get a snow yam straight away, which is perfect. We need that for the community center. Unfortunately, I didn't find a nautilus shell, but hey, at least we got one item. I return to the farm and turn another ancient seed I had into an ancient seed. Like a plantable ancient seed, basically I turned an artifact into a seed. I ask Pam to bring me to Kaloka Desert where I head into the casino. I wanted to buy some QI coins, but I accidentally used my beach warp totem. That was embarrassing. After that little kerfuffle, I decide to ask Robin to build a new pond on her farm. I pick up a crocus outside the community center before heading inside and donating said crocus and the snow yam we acquired at the beach. The only item we need now is the nautilus shell. I once again head to the desert and venture inside the casino where I actually successfully purchase QI coins this time. Key coins, sorry I said it wrong, my bad. This day is already way too long so I'm going to keep this part as short as I can. I wanted to get 3 star drop symbols so we'd receive 250,000 coins. Long story short, I didn't get 3 star drop symbols. Just for the sake of clarity I spent 14 minutes trying to do this. That is 14 minutes of my life I will never get back. I fill the greenhouse with cranberry seeds to make sure we still have a steady income this month. I haven't forgotten about our goal to earn a total of 1 million gold, don't you worry about that. I spent some time working on our storage shed, then I warped to the beach for some reason. Like, I, I genuinely don't know why I did that. Any whomst, the Junimos repaired a bridge to the quarry during the night. For the first day is almost 3 minutes long. The morning of day 86 is spent working on our storage area. I am fully aware that I still have yet to achieve any of our goals, but having a tidy storage area makes my soul feel at peace. Completing our goals would also make my soul feel at peace now that I think about it. I'm tremendously confused. I break some rocks in the quarry area, then I make my way through the quarry mine and collect the golden scythe at the end. I was about to walk all the way back to the entrance when I remembered you can interact with the statue at the end to teleport back to the entrance. I'm actually surprised I remember that. Bit of bad news, there is still a distinct lack of nautilus shells at the beach. I throw a sturgeon into our pond on day 87, then I chop down our mahogany trees and end up with 41 hardwood. Not too shabby. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about me going to the secret woods to collect hardwood anymore, but I wanted to mention it this one time just in case anyone is wondering where the extra hardwood came from. In the words of Professor Farnsworth from Futurama, Good news everyone! I found a nautilus shell at the beach. I buy some coal from Clint before donating the shell to the community center. We have finally completed every bundle. 
More importantly, we have completed our first goal. This rejuvenated my spirits. All I need to do is keep the momentum going and we should complete all of our goals before the end of winter. Things are looking good, which is normally a bad sign for me, but I'm going to be optimistic. I make 30-something bombs and use them to take down a good portion of the trees that are still on our farm. I spend the rest of the day chopping down the remaining trees and getting rid of any stone and fibre on the farm. This is what our farm looks like right now. It looks pretty empty, I know, but I'll try to make it look at least a bit aesthetically pleasing before the end of winter. Lewis sends us a letter on day 88 thanking us for completing the bounty board bundles. Reading that letter really warmed my heart. But what made me feel even better was realising that this earned us two full hearts with every villager who we cannot date which means Krobus is now at 8 hearts. Sweet. The community centre has officially been restored, which is also sweet. I sell some eggs to Pierre, then something peculiar happens. Shane walks into the abandoned Georgia Mart. I, I don't think that's supposed to happen. I don't know how that happened. I sell some gems and two iridium bars to Clinty Winty, then I ask Robin to upgrade our house. It cost 50,000 gold and 150 hardwood, but it is worth it. We need that upgrade in order for Krobus to move in with us. At least I think we need that upgrade. E even if we didn't need it, it's all good. I wanted to upgrade our house anyway. I plop the Stardew Valley Hero Trophy at the top of her storage shed. Just in case anybody doesn't know, you get this trophy for completing the community center. Before the day ends, I pick up all of the sprinklers on our farm. Half of the cranberries in our greenhouse are ready for harvest on day 89. I sell them to Pierre, donate some artifacts to the museum, then I donate 200 hardwood, 5 iridium bars and 5 battery packs to Willy so he can repair the boat. I buy some coffee and salads in the saloon, then I do some fishing off floor 100 of the mines to complete Linus' special order. At the bathhouse area, I meet the wizard and begin his quest. I completely forgot this was a thing. I throw the garbage I got from fishing into the dumpster to complete Linus's order, then I talk to Krobus and ask him to open the entrance to the mutant bug lair. I make my way through the area, collecting the dark talisman at the end. Robin and Willy repair the boat during the night. On day 90, Linus is relaxing in the lake, during winter. Like I said in a previous video, Linus is an interesting critter. I head to the Witch's Swamp and do some fishing to collect two Void Salmon and a Void Mayonnaise. I give the mayo to the Goblin Henchman, collect the Wizard's Ink and return to the Wizard's Tower to give it to him. We have now unlocked the shop in his tower. We can purchase Junimo Huts, the Gold Clock and the Obelisks. I still don't feel comfortable saying that word, I feel like I'm going to mispronounce it a lot so I'm just going to... Magical Towers, alright? That's what we're going to refer to those as from now on. We are nowhere close to being able to afford any of them right now though, so that is not very chill. What is very chill however, is I went to Willy's shop and used his boat to get to Ginger Island. I immediately head to the forest and collect two golden walnuts. I give one to the parrot, then I spend the rest of the day in the volcano dungeon. I struggled a bit with this, but we had pretty easy access to magma caps. This is a forage item which gives a ton of energy and health when eaten. My goal here was to make it to the end of the Volcano Dungeon, aka Floor 10. I made it to Floor 9, then I passed out right in front of the entrance to Floor 10. I was absolutely heartbroken when this happened. More cranberries are ready on Day 91. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I won't mention harvesting these cranberries anymore unless it's for an important reason. What could that important reason possibly be? Keep watching to find out. Mmm, actually no, I don't I don't like doing that. Alright, spoiler alert, and I legitimately mean spoiler alert here, this is big. Skip forward by about 30 seconds if you don't want to have a pretty big event and this playthrough spoil for you. Alright, if you're still listening, I'm going to assume you want to hear it. We end up collecting 100 golden walnuts and unlocking Mr. Key's walnut room. He gives us a quest near the end of winter that requires us to bring him 100 different items of different colours. So 100 red items, 100 blue items, 100 yellow items, yada yada yada. The red item we bring him is the cranberries that we harvested in our greenhouse. So there you go. After giving Krobus slash Mr. K slash my best friend a pumpkin, we reach 9 hearts with him. Sensational. Next it is time for me to redeem myself for yesterday's hullabaloo in the volcano dungeon. This time will be different. I'm not just ready. I'm prepared. 
I don't know what I was doing wrong yesterday, but this actually ended up being really easy. Which I am very grateful for, because if I failed again today, I would have cried. I collect the two golden walnuts and the prismatic shard at the end of the volcano. Next, it is time to collect some more golden walnuts. At around 7pm, I spend some walnuts to open up the farm area of the island. I immediately get to work on planting our crops. The important thing to note here is we planted melon, garlic and wheat seeds. There is a frog in the cave beside our farmhouse here that will give us a total of 15 golden walnuts for growing these three crops. So I really want to get that done, as you can imagine. Robin has a special order for us on day 92. She would like us to collect 1,000 pieces of wood. We do need wood, so this is a win-win. Willie's shop is locked today, which means we can't go to Ginger Island. That is unfortunate. The reason why it's closed is because the Festival of Ice takes place today. I take a gander at the travelling cart. I don't know if I already bought the rare crow it has for sale, but I buy it anyway just to be safe. The fishing competition begins and I take a walk. Listen, I'm going to say this as clearly as I possibly can. I will never, ever allow myself to win this competition. Willie should win this competition every single time. I will not hear anybody out on this. Willie is a gentleman and deserves his moment in the spotlight. Think about it. He gives you a fishing rod for free, he gives you a copper pan for free which allows you to go panning, and he brings you to Ginger Island. Admittedly, that last one isn't free, you have to give him 1000 gold every time, but my point still stands. Willie does so much for the farmer, so the least I can do is make sure he wins this competition. A void chicken has been welcomed into the family on day 93. I decide to call this chicken, Scallywag. Yeah, I'm running out of ideas for names. I collect an amethyst, a ruby, an emerald, a topaz and an aquamarine out of a chest and head to Ginger Island. I head to the forest where a bird drops a topaz. This is really good timing. I'm going to try to explain this next part as clearly as I can so please bear with me for a moment. That topaz we picked up is part of a puzzle. Because we found it in the forest which is on the right side of the island, it gets placed on the podium on the right. As for the remaining three podiums, normally you would come back to the island on a rainy day, find another bird in a different part of the island, and place the gemma drops on the corresponding podium. But I am under a significant time constraint here. I cannot afford to be dilly-dallying like that. So instead, I place the gems I brought with me on the podiums in the hopes that I can guess the correct layout. It takes around a minute, but I actually managed to do it. I spend 20 golden walnuts to unlock the farmhouse before the day ends. I begin day 94 by planting some more seeds on our island farm. In a perfect world, I would be planting starfruit seeds here right now, but perfection is a cruel mistress, and I am lazy. So a random assortment of seeds will do for now. I head back to Pelican Town and ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut, which provides us with a golden walnut. I purchase enough coal and iron ore to make a single bomb, then it's back to Ginger Island to open up the dig site. I break all of the rocks here because they can drop artifacts that we can donate to the island office when we free Professor Snail from the cave he's trapped inside of. Speaking of, I use the bomb we made to do exactly that. I return to the island farm and plant some taro roots, then I return to Pelican Town and finally find the shadow figure that we saw on the first day of winter. I forgot about them. I really hope they didn't stay in that bush for the last nine days just waiting for me to show up. If they did, then that might just be the longest game of hide and seek I've ever played in my life. There were quite a few artifact spots at the bus stop, so I dug them all up and found like 4 books. That was kind of a waste of time. On day 95, I spend a significant amount of time in the forest chopping down trees for Robin's special order. The good news is I collected over 1000 pieces of wood completing that special order. The bad news is there are now like 4 trees remaining in the forest, which probably isn't a good thing. I'll replant all of them at some point, I promise. I toss a sturgeon row into the preserve jar I have so that it will turn into caviar in a few days time. We have finally reached 10 hearts with Krobus on day 96. That is fantastic news, but we haven't finished our goal yet. We still need to get him to move in with us. I head to the desert and I walk around for a while. I don't know what I was doing here. That's happened a few times actually, now that I think about it. Wait, nope, it turns out I just forgot to bring the 200 void essence with me, so I went back to our farm, collected those, and then went to Robin's to add the two extra rooms to our house. 
I also asked her to upgrade her coop. Then I went to the desert and exchanged my Void Essence for the Void Ghost Pendant. I give this pendant to Krobus who accepts the invitation to move into her house. And they were roommates. On day 97, the spirits are somewhat mildly perturbed, which means we have bad luck for the day. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that, I'm going straight to sleep. Day 98 is a hardwood collection day. I chop down all of our mahogany trees and receive at least two pieces of hardwood. Okay, no, that's not funny, I don't know why I said that. We actually got around 160 pieces of hardwood from this. I make a ton of wood fences and start the process of beautifying our farm. And by that I mean I just place fences down to mark different areas. It worked out pretty well though. I've got desig... des... desig... ah... Uh, I can't... give me one second. Designated. I've got designated areas for our coop and barn, our ponds, our crops we'll be planting next year, our greenhouse and tree farm section, and our shed and tree farm section. And that was all I did today. I head to Robins on day 99 and ask her to build a stable. Except I couldn't do that because I forgot to take away the four fences beside her house. I return to Robins a short while later and move our coop, barn and shed to their designated areas and ask her to build that stable. When I talked to Krobus, he said, You're a strange one to want to live with a creature like me. You're a strange one. I've heard that multiple times during the last month alone. Why does everybody say that to me? What's going on? Caroline would like us to grow and ship 100 taro roots for a special order, which I accept. After a bit of a hiatus from Ginger Island, I finally return. I dig up an artifact spot and receive two golden coconuts. Cool. The wheat and garlic are fully grown, but the melon isn't, so I still need to wait for that before I can get the 15 golden walnuts. We do get several walnuts for harvesting the other crops, though. I also get two walnuts by breaking muscle nodes. That puts us at a total of 53 golden walnuts collected. That's actually not too bad, in my opinion. All of the crops we harvested here get thrown into our shipping bin. I plant even more seeds before the day ends. Day 100 begins with a trip to the dig site. It's business as usual here. I break the rocks in the hopes of finding artifacts we can donate. I also do some panning to get the fossilized tail. I return to Pelican Town and ask Clint to crack open our golden coconuts. Never mind, he's not there. I head to the saloon to buy... Never mind, Gus isn't there. What is going on today? I head to the desert and buy 200 beet seeds. I plant these on Ginger Island. I head to the island office and donate three artifacts, then I make my way to the night market and spend the rest of the day fishing in the submarine. On day 101, I crack open our golden coconuts and receive a banana tree sapling and some pineapple seeds. I do a bit of fishing at the Ginger Island docks, then I plant our pineapple seeds and our banana tree sapling. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I receive a golden walnut for harvesting a cauliflower on day one. This, this, wait, 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 wait. This is like 500 words for one day. How did I manage to? Th All right, let's just, let's just get through this. All right, here we go. I receive a golden walnut for harvesting a cauliflower on day 102, which is nice. Our melon has also fully grown, which is even nicer. Between this, the wheat and the garlic, we receive a total of 15 golden walnuts. I got another golden walnut when I harvested the melons, so I believe we have just witnessed what is referred to as a double whammy. I decided to have the resort built, which means the villagers can now visit the island. I head to the island office and answer two survey questions so I can get another two walnuts. I answered the first question correctly. I accidentally picked the wrong answer for the second question, so we have to come back tomorrow to answer it again. I know the answer though, I don't understand why I can't just answer it now and get my golden walnut. Why do I have to wait? Why do I have to come back tomorrow? This anyway, I buy 150 coal and 100 iron ore from Clint, make 10 seed makers and 25 bombs, and check my mail for the first time in a couple of days. Mira Lewis tells us about the feast of the Winter Star Festival. The person we can give a gift to is Maru. We can give her a gold bar, so it'll be grand. I buy some coffee from Gus, then I head to Ginger Island and set up my seed makers. You may have noticed that I have 11 seed makers and not 10. That is because I made 10 and brought the one we received from the community center with me too. You see that? I'm utilizing all of the resources available to me. A at least I think I am. I don't know anymore. Look, I'll be honest. I didn't think I'd make it this far. I don't know what I'm doing. I made a plan for spring and that went well, but I've just been winging it ever since. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm legitimately surprised things have gone as well as they have. But I'm not complaining. Alright, we're doing well, so let's just keep going. 
In rather unfortunate news, it was also at this point that I realized there is no way I'm going to be able to complete Caroline's special order. Like, there is genuinely a 0% probability that I'll be able to grow and ship 100 tower roots within the next 10 days or so. It's just not happening. But you have to take the good with the bad and all that. I spend the rest of the day in the volcano dungeon collecting golden walnuts. You may notice that coffee and triple shot espressos will appear in my inventory from time to time. That is because I found the hot java ring in a chest in the volcano dungeon. When you have this equipped, every monster you defeat has a 25% chance of dropping a coffee. If they don't drop a coffee, they have a 10% chance of dropping a triple shot espresso. On day 103, I find out I have collected a total of 82 gold and walnuts. I donate a mummified bat to the field office and answer the second question correctly this time to earn two more walnuts. I spend most of the day going through the volcano dungeon again, then I go back to check our progress once more. We are now at 90 golden walnuts. I find a mummified frog in the forest on day 104. I also found a few journal scraps that show the locations of walnuts, so I make good use of those to collect a pearl and two golden walnuts. I donate the frog to the office receiving another walnut. I have said the word walnut way too many times already. I apologize. Day 105 is a big harvest day on our island farm. I throw everything into our shipping bin, then I head to the southeast side of the island to collect a golden walnut. And another golden walnut. And a third golden walnut. I play the Simon Says game to get another three golden walnuts. Then I unlock the island's fast travel system. Looking back on this, I now realize I did not use it a single time between now and the end of winter. I head back to our farm in Pelican Town and throw some items I was keeping on Ginger Island into my storage shed. I then use a warp totem to get back to Ginger Island, collect more items from my chest, and warp back to the farm. On day 106, a notification lets us know that we have officially earned a total of 1 million gold. That's three of our four goals completed. All we have to do now is unlock Mr. Key's walnut room. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a second pond on her farm, then it's time for another special order. I decide to choose Emily's order. She wants an amethyst, an emerald, a jade, a ruby, and a topaz. I have a good few of all of those in my storage shed, so this will be an easy one. It's off the Ginger Island where I spend about 20 seconds in the volcano dungeon, then I got scared and left. I make my way to Leo's treehouse and ask the parrot for a hint as to where a golden walnut is hidden. Buried near bones. I know exactly where that is because I've gotten that exact same hint before. To be honest, I'm surprised I missed this one, but at least we got it now. I head to Mr. Key's walnut room to check my progress, but something else happens. Instead of telling me how many walnuts I've collected, the door opens and I head inside. We did it. We actually did it. We made it into the walnut room. I take a look at the special orders board in this room. I decide to go with the prismatic range order. I also check how much progress we've made so far. 25%. Uh, okay, that's, that's a bit lower than I was expecting. Look, I think the important thing here is that we made it into the walnut room, right? We did good. We achieved all of our goals. Let's just ignore that 25%. It doesn't exist. It's not canon anymore, all right? We're ignoring it. On the morning of day 107, I start smelting copper ore. I want to get an oak resin farm set up, so we need as many tappers as we can get our hands on. While our furnaces are working away, I start planting oak, maple, and pine tree saplings beside our greenhouse. I also exclusively plant oak tree saplings down by our shed. I spend some time placing stone flooring on our farm. I'm basically decorating this farm the same way I decorate the farm every single time. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I also end up making a total of 25 tappers. Mayor Lewis sends us a letter on day 108, reminding us about the Feast of the Winter Star Festival that takes place tomorrow. I forgot about that, thank you for the reminder. I decide to call my horse Harry Styles. Get it, like Harry Styles, but Harry because horse is like, hey, um, I'm sorry. I place my seed makers in the greenhouse and put the two ancient fruit I harvested into them. We get two ancient seeds from this, so I plant them. I head to Willy's where I decide to buy the Iridium Rod. Then I fish until we've got a total of five seaweed because I want to buy another pond. Back on our farm, I toss a midnight squid into the second pond. I only did this so we can get our hands on some squid ink. 
Once we've got a couple of those, I'll replace it with a different fish. The witch drops by our farm and adds a void chicken to her coop. But that's not all. On the screen that shows how much gold we earned from the items we shipped, Santa Claus shows up. Isn't that pretty rare? Like, aren't both of those things pretty rare? How do we get two of them in one night? That's pretty neat, in my opinion. I throw some gold ore into a furnace on day 109. I collect the gold bar when it's ready, then I head to the Feast of the Winter Star. I give the gold bar to Maru, which she accepts gracefully. Great, 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 graciously. I've made that mistake before, actually. Then Leah gives us a present. Ten Deluxe Speed Grow. That's actually a fairly decent present. Thank you. I ask Robin to build the third pond on our farm on day 110. I was on my way to Clint's when I bumped into him on the bridge. That's fine, I'll just cry myself to sleep tonight, I suppose. I scavenge my storage shed for items I can use for Mr. Key's special order. I buy 100 Georgia Colas in the saloon which covers the 100 blue items. I head to the community center and give Emily all of the gems she requested as part of her special order. Except, I messed up. Clint gave us a quest to give Emily an amethyst. Emily also requested an amethyst as part of her special order. When I gave Emily said amethyst, it completed Clint's quest instead of her special order. I quickly run back to my farm, pick up another amethyst and give it to her. I head to the mines, drink a coffee, consume a monster musk and spend the rest of the day collecting bug meat and copper ore. This will cover the purple and orange items needed for Mr. Key's special order. It goes very well and I leave the mines with everything I need. Emily sends us a sewing machine on day 111 as a thank you for completing her special order. I head to Ginger Island where a very special cranberry harvest takes place. You remember I said I wouldn't mention harvesting cranberries unless it's for an important reason? Well, there is a very important reason for this one. We had everything we needed for Mr. Key's special order except 100 red items. So these cranberries are going to be donated to Mr. Key. I also harvest the taro roots that have grown, and yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to complete Caroline's special order to grow and ship 100 of these. That's kind of disappointing, because the reward for completing that special order is the crafting recipe for the solar panel. Solar panels produce battery packs during sunny weather. That would have been incredibly useful. I complete Mr. Key's special order and receive 35 key gems. I spend these gems on the key to the town and 60 magic bait. The key to the town lets us enter all of the buildings in Pelican Town at any time. Magic Bait allows us to catch any fish from a specific water source regardless of the weather, season or time. For example, if we use Magic Bait while we're fishing at the beach during winter, we can catch a puffer fish. Whereas normally you can only catch a puffer fish at the beach during summer. I spent some time fishing at the mountain lake, of course using the Magic Bait. Some bubbles popped up while I was here, so that made things even easier. After a while, I moved down to the river by Penny's trailer. Then I finally go down to the beach to finish our fishing adventure for the day. We have a bit of a kerfuffle. I have caught so many different types of fish that I have no more space in my inventory. I eat two chubs, catch two more fish, and throw all of the fish I caught today in my shipping bin. Between our crops and our fish, we made around 15,000 gold. I was hoping for a bit more than that, but it all adds up. I begin day 112 by placing tappers on all of our oak trees and throwing a blue discus into our pond. I also place three tappers on three of the trees by the greenhouse. That's almost a tongue twister. I decide to treat my animals to some hay, two heaters, and some ornamental hay bales. I should have done this at the beginning of winter, but I forgot. Sorry. I also pick up Mira Lewis's shorts. I want to wear these. And I will, as soon as I can figure out how to operate the sewing machine. I must be doing something wrong because I can't turn these shorts into shorts that I can actually wear. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check the Stardew Valley wiki and find out what I have to do. Right, so it turns out I need a gold bar. I say hi to Louie and wait for the gold ore to be smelted. While I'm waiting for that, I pay a visit to Ginger Island and head into the cove where I catch a stingray. That's all I wanted to do here, so I head back to the farm and wait for the gold bar to be ready. I collect it and combine it with Lewis's shorts to make the trimmed, lucky purple shorts. I, I take my pants off and replace them with my new shorts. That shouldn't be funny, but it is. I now feel complete. 
I spend the rest of the day changing the wallpaper in the house just to spice things up a bit. With that done, I sit down for a moment to acknowledge that this is the end of our first year in Stardew Valley. It was pretty stressful, I won't lie, but it was a lot of fun too. I head to sleep feeling very happy with how things went. I begin day 113 by taking a moment to gather my surroundings. It has been quite a while since I played on this farm since the previous day, so I was a bit discombobulated for a moment. I wish I could say I immediately jumped right back into being a professional Stardew Valley athlete, but that simply isn't true. You will see as we get further into spring that I had no idea what I was doing at times. Any whomst, Kent has arrived back in Pelican Town, which is always nice to see. The first thing on the agenda is to clear our farm of any debris that has appeared. I head into my storage shed and collect 18 sprinklers. I'll be honest, I thought I had a lot more sprinklers than that. The good news is the cranberries in our greenhouse are ready for harvest, so I was very happy to see that. Next up is a trip to Piers to sell the cranberries and purchase 400 potato seeds along with 5 of every other spring seed. The rest of the day is spent planting the seeds I bought. I also throw some iridium ore and gold ore into furnaces and throw a diamond into a crystallarium. On day 114, I make a grand total of two iridium sprinklers and plant some more potato seeds. Then it's off to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day. This was probably a terrible idea considering I was still getting back into the swing of things. In fact, this should have gone really, really, and I cannot stress this enough, really poorly. Thankfully though, I actually managed to avoid being knocked out. Also, I collected quite a bit of iridium ore. Also, also, I made it to floor 78 before passing out. Also, 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 I reached level 10 in combat. I'm not going to lie to you, I am very happy with how today went. It might not seem like a big deal, but then again, it's the small things in life that matter. I decide to do some foraging on the morning of day 115. I don't actually need any of these forage items, I just like walking through the forest. I decided it was time to replace the straw hat I won during the egg hunt last year. I purchase a daisy from the hat mouse and place it in my hair. I feel absolutely sensational right now. I ask Clint to crack open my omni geodes and purchase 200 copper ore. I used these copper ore to make more furnaces. Looking back on this, this was definitely a waste of money. But if there is one thing you need to know about me, it's that I am the opposite of smart. Dare I even say I am unsmart. I collect some magic bait from a chest and accept a special order from the wizard. He wants us to bring him ectoplasm. I purchase two crab pots from Willy, officially bankrupting myself, and set the crab pots up at the beach. Now it is time for me to conquer an old rival of mine, the crimson fish. Under normal circumstances, you can only catch this fish during summer. But I have magic bait, which means we can catch it any time. Full transparency, I failed miserably for quite some time. But I didn't give up. I kept pushing forward. Each and every time I failed to catch it, every time a different fish popped up, I just felt more and more motivated to catch this beast of a fish. And that is exactly what I ended up doing. I am feeling very oozy right now. I might have to stop saying that phrase actually, considering I feel a deep sense of genuine sadness every time I think about what happened with Roman Reigns and the Usos. I've, 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 I've actually just hurt my own feelings with that one. Our next stop is the mines where we can catch the stonefish. It took me quite a while, but I did end up catching this fish. This will not be the last time I say that sentence. Some good news on day 116, our gold and iridium empire is thriving. Also, two ancient fruit are ready for harvest in the greenhouse. My plan here is to keep throwing them at the seed makers to hopefully get hundreds of ancient fruit seeds over time. I go through my chest to find items that are needed for the shipping collection. I do need to pay more attention to that whole shipping thing because I've got maybe half of it done at this point. I head into the sewers with the intent of catching another legendary fish, the mutant carp. Thankfully this one was nowhere near as bad as the crimson fish. I managed to catch this one without too much hassle. I keep the fishing train going and head into the mutant bug lair where I catch the slime jack. Finally to end the day I head to the mines where I go ghost hunting in an attempt to get ectoplasm. Just in case anyone has forgotten, we need to give ectoplasm to the wizard to complete a special order. This plan did not go the way I wanted it to. 
As in, I passed out without getting any ectoplasm. But that's okay, we still have time to get it done. I purchase a rare seed from the traveling cart on the morning of day 117. It's off to Ginger Island where I immediately make two discoveries. Number one, our cranberries, cactus fruit, pineapples and blueberries are ready for harvest. Number two, there is a ton of sprinklers here that are not being used. I completely forgot these were here. This would have been really nice to know back on day 113. I could have planted all of the potato seeds I bought on that day if I knew these sprinklers were here. I pick up the sprinklers that aren't being used and I accept a special order from Mr. Key to give him four prismatic shards. This shouldn't be too difficult. I am almost certain I saw three prismatic shards in her shed and in a chest in the farmhouse, so this was a good quest for us to get. I check out the fortune teller TV show and we have the worst possible luck for the day. That's not good. That's not good at all. Rather than go to the Skull Cavern, I plant the rest of the potato seeds I have instead. Our potatoes are ready to harvest on day 118. As an Irishman, I can tell you that nothing makes me happier than staring up at the ceiling at midnight and listening to Harry Styles. That wasn't what you expected me to say, was it? No, no, you thought I was going to talk about potatoes and how they make me happy, huh? Anyway, I gave a pumpkin to Krobus and receive a strange bun and a star drop in return. Sweet. What is not sweet is we have bad luck again today. I sell my crappie whoppies to Pierre and harvest the cranberries in our greenhouse. I must say, I am so incredibly grateful that I planted cranberry seeds. No joke, right? I know I've said this before, but I actually mean this unironically. Harvesting these cranberries gives me a serotonin boost every single time. I head to my good pal Clint and ask him to upgrade my axe. I buy cooking recipes in the saloon along with as many pizzas as I can afford. Then it's back to the mines in pursuit of the wizard's ectoplasm. I spend a few minutes in here trying to get ectoplasm. Then I make a discovery. I already have the crafting recipe for monster musk. Literally the only reason why I wanted to complete the wizard's special order was because I thought I would be receiving that crafting recipe as a reward. I haven't just wasted my time. I have wasted your time. I apologize. It will probably happen again, but I do apologize. We have good luck on day 119, which already puts me in a good mood. Oak Resin is ready to collect too, which is always nice to see. I purchase a rare seed and a battery pack from the traveling cart, then I trade my jade for staircases in the desert. I use the staircases to immediately get down to floor 17, then I begin making my way through the Skull Caverns. I find a dark cowboy hat on floor 51, then I pass out on floor 55. You know what? I think I'm getting better at going through the Skull Cavern. I'm feeling pretty chuffed right now. It is back to the Skull Cavern on day 120. It was going well, very well. In fact, dare I even say I was absolutely flourishing. That is until I got distracted by my phone and was knocked out. The good news is I didn't really lose anything important. I think I'm most upset about losing my salads, so that could have gone a lot worse. With vengeance on my mind, I head to Clint's on day 121, collect my gold axe, and ask Clinty Winty to upgrade my hoe. I wanted to go to the Skull Cavern, but Pam didn't show up, so that was very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees because I need wood, and I also felt very lazy. So it was a win-win. I continue my quest to bankrupt Pierre on day 122, then to the surprise of absolutely nobody I'm sure, it's off to the Skull Cavern again. It was going very well until I got knocked out. This time however, it was entirely my fault. I simply was not good enough today. I only lost bug meat though, so it looks like the game felt bad for me and decided to take it easy on me, which I am extremely grateful for. Concerned Ape, if you're watching, thank you for taking pity on me sir. Day 123 is a big potato harvest day. That is absolutely sterling. I take a look at the progress I've made on the monster eradication goals. I'm really close to completing the first page. In even more good news, the cranberries are ready for harvest again. I make a monster musk, then I head to the mines. I really want to get that first page of monster eradication goals complete. So the rest of day 123 as well as days 124 through 129 are spent in the mines completing that first page. I begin day 130 by tending to our crab pots. We need to get things like shrimp, mussels and crabs from them for the fishing collection, so I bought more during the previous few days. 
I deliver 4 prismatic shards to Mr. Key and use all but 10 of my key gems to buy magic bait. I want to catch a Dorado fish with the magic bait because it's one of the 10-ish fish I still need to catch. I probably have less than 10 fish left to get for the fishing collection, but I feel like that's a solid estimate. It took so much time for a Dorado to finally appear, but thankfully it eventually did, so we can cross that one off the list. After that, it's off to the beach for some more fishing. I caught a puffer fish, then I realized my inventory was full. So I decided to head home and get some sleep. I reached level 10 in fishing too, which is really good news. Day 131 begins and ends at the beach. My goal here was to catch an octopus and a squid. I literally spent the entire day here. Unfortunately, a squid did not show up, but I did manage to catch an octopus before passing out. It's off the floor 100 of the mines to catch the lava eel on day 132. It takes a while because I keep getting trash, but I do eventually hook a lava eel. This was a slightly tricky one to catch, but I am literally the greatest fisherman who has ever lived, so it was always guaranteed that I would be able to catch it. That was a lie. Next up is a trip to the desert to catch the scorpion carp. This fish has always been the bane of my existence. Like I literally cannot describe how much misery this fish has caused me in the past. But I am a whole different person now. So catching the scorpion carp was actually fairly easy this time. Which I am eternally grateful for because if I struggled with this one I probably would not have made this video. You know the phrase big brain moment? Like if someone does something clever or says something smart you might call them big brain? Yeah, I did the opposite of that. I wanted to buy more magic bait, but I accidentally bought 10 key seasoning instead. Not my proudest moment. I accept the danger in the deep quest. We only have two days to complete it, so I definitely won't get it done, but it does give me a chance to collect radioactive ore. I head straight to the mines where I spend the rest of the day. I collect two radioactive ore and make it to floor 19 before passing out. I head straight to the mines on day 133. All I'm focused on here is collecting as much radioactive ore as I can. I do this until around 1pm, then I leave and head to the saloon. I buy 10 pizzas, eat 3 of them, and sit down for a while. It is during this little moment of peace and quiet that I realize pretty much all I have done so far during spring is go fishing and go to the Skull Cavern in the mines. These aren't exactly the most exciting things, but it did help us make some good progress on our goals, so I think it was worth it. Hopefully Summer will have a larger variety of activities every day. I head to Clint's and ask him to upgrade my axe, then I decide it is time to catch the Legend Fish. I'm not even going to waste your time here. I failed. And that's an understatement. I got absolutely annihilated by this absolute behemoth of a fish. I legitimately did not stand a chance against it but I do have a game plan. I will return tomorrow with food that boosts my fishing skill. I am going to catch this fish tomorrow. I have to. On day 134, we have another cranberry harvest. Normally by now I would have said something like, I won't mention harvesting these cranberries anymore, but I very much enjoy harvesting them and would like to continue sharing this lovely experience with you all. Pam has a quest for us. She would like to receive 12 bottles of potato juice. We can do that for her, we just need to make a few kegs first. I head to the mountains and attempt to catch the legend fish. Again, I'm not going to waste your time. I didn't end up catching it. I am so ashamed of myself. I needed a pick-me-up after that little kerfuffle, so I head to the Adventurers Guild and take a look at the monster eradication goals again. We're pretty close to completing the second page of goals, so that provided me with a nice serotonin boost, I have already said that. That provided me with a nice dopamine boost. There you go. Actually, I, I, I've I definitely said that one before too, multiple times, in fact. Y you know, I, it, it, it made me happy, alright? That's what I'm trying to get across here. I head to Clint's on the morning of day 135 and collect my axe, purchase 400 pieces of wood from Robin, and 25 potato seeds from Pierre. I also buy 25 speed grow and 25 deluxe speed grow. Yeah, I, I messed up. I bought the wrong speed grow at first. Ignore that. Don't worry about it. It's a non-factor. It was retconned and never happened. Blim blam out the window. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm, look, I didn't mean to buy the original speed grow is what I'm trying to say here. Let's move on. I plant 12 potato seeds in the greenhouse, make 28 kegs, and place these kegs in the greenhouse. Hopefully the potatoes and the resulting potato juice will be ready before the time limit for Pam's special order ends. 
the rest of the day, as well as days 136 through 139, are spent in the Skull Caverns completing all but one of the remaining monster eradication goals. All we have to do now is complete the Magma Sprite goal. So we'll go to the Volcano Dungeon at some point and get that done. Also, we had a Cauliflower Harvest during that time, so that provided a very tasty boost to our bank account. On day 140, I have an announcement. I am not afraid to admit when I have done something foolish, and that is exactly what has occurred. I was convinced I lost my axe during the last three days because I couldn't find it in any chest on my farm. Like, I got to the point where I genuinely thought I would have to go through the rest of this playthrough without an axe. It turns out it was in the chest in the greenhouse the entire time. I was on my way to the mountains because the legend fish appears on the 28th day of spring, so I wouldn't need magic bait to catch it today. The problem is... It's not raining, and it has to be raining for the legend to show up today. That threw me for a loop. I was planning on spending the whole day trying to catch the legend, so I had no idea what to do with myself at this point. In the end, I decided to go fishing in the fountain outside the community center so I could get the trash can. Then I collected the Junimo plushie from the bush at the playground. Then I just sat down on a bench beside my two prized possessions. And that's it for spring. Like I said earlier in the season, I spent almost the entirety of my time in the mines, in the Skull Cavern, or fishing. But I still had a good time. It was a nice way to get back into the swing of things. However, I will be sure to diversify my interests and spice things up a bit in summer. Speaking of summer... The first day of summer, aka day 141, begins with us accepting a special order from Demetrius. All we have to do for this one is catch 20 ocean fish, which isn't too bad at all. And we will receive the crafting recipe for the computer as a reward so it's worth it. I head to the desert and buy as many starfruit seeds as I can. We really need to start making a lot more money this season. I spend the rest of the day planting all of these seeds. Also, Bailey gave birth to a sheep. I call this sheep Buttercup. On day 142, I place bait into the crab pots at the river. We are very, very close to completing the fishing collection at this point. But it is going to take a lot of effort to catch the remaining fish, as you will see as this season goes on. The entirety of today is spent fishing at the beach to complete Demetrius' special order. Demetrius sends us the crafting recipe for the computer on day 143. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a second shed on the farm. I'm not entirely sure what I will put in the shed yet, but I'm leaning towards kegs. I head to Willy's shop because I want to go to Ginger Island, but I can't afford a ticket. Things are bad, I, I need to look over my accounts and see what I can do to improve my financial situation. I decide to sell a couple of cooked dishes to Pierre, which gives me just enough gold to be able to afford a ticket. In the walnut room, I accept a special order to find 100 each of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple items. This is probably my favorite key quest. It's a really handy one to get done. After going through my chests on day 144, all I need is 87 copper and 91 Georgia colas for Mr. Key's special order. I head straight to the mines to collect the copper ore I need, which thankfully doesn't take long at all. Then it's off to the saloon to purchase the Georgia colas I need. Finally, I deliver all of the items to Mr. Key, bringing us up to a total of 37 key gems. I use these to purchase 140 magic bait. The potato juice is ready to collect in our greenhouse, so I pick them up and bring them to Pam. Right after this, I collect the items that have appeared in the crab pots. Now all we need to do is catch three more fish. Day 145 begins with our quest to catch the first of those three fish. The glacier fish. I will be completely honest here, I was absolutely dreading catching this fish. This fish has always been the biggest thorn in my side. It's the reason why I get nervous anytime I set the goal of completing the fishing collection. I took a break from fishing and did a quick jog around the area to hype myself up. I can do this. I will do this. I must do this. The glacier fish will not defeat me again. I cast my rod into the water and hook the fish. Game on. I put every ounce of passion and dedication I had in my body into catching this fish. Failure was no longer an option, nay, failure was no longer a word in my vocabulary. And so, it is with a sense of pride and accomplishment that I announce I was indeed able to catch the glacier fish. I feel 
So happy right now, but there ain't no rest for the wicked. With one fish down, it's off to the mountain to catch the second fish. The legend. As you have all seen in this video, I have already failed to catch this fish many, many times so far. But this time, this time things are different. This time there is a voice telling me that I can do this. That voice is motivating me and keeping my spirits up. And it is thanks to this voice that I managed to finally catch the legend. Thank you to that voice. Two down, one more to go. Next stop, the beach. Our final target is the squid. Catching the fish is actually the easy part. The hard part is actually hooking the fish in the first place. For whatever reason, the squid has completely avoided me any and every time I've gone fishing at the beach. I was convinced that I would have to come back here tomorrow to catch the squid until a miracle happened. I caught a fish. And it ended up being the squid. And with that, the fishing collection is complete. Today has been an absolutely sensational day. I'm on a roll right now, so I decide to go to Ginger Island and enter the Volcano Dungeon. I want to keep the ball rolling and defeat some magma sprites in order to complete the final monster eradication goal. I realize pretty soon into this adventure that I have forgotten to bring my watering can with me. I need that. So I head back to Pelican Town and pass out beside the bus stop. Willy sends us a star drop on day 146 as a reward for completing the fishing collection. Nice. It's off to Robins to ask her to build a third shed on our farm, then we return to the Volcano Dungeon to continue defeating Magma Sprites. The rest of the day, as well as days 147 through 150, are spent at the Volcano Dungeon to complete the final monster eradication goal. I don't really like skipping through days like this, but sometimes it's unavoidable. I wish I could say it won't happen again, but realistically it's going to happen another two or three times before the end of this video, I reckon. The Luau takes place on day 151. I throw an Iridium quality super cucumber into the soup, which gets the best reaction from the governor. Our starfruit is ready for harvest on day 152. This is absolutely marvelous news. I've been waiting so long for this moment. As I collect each and every piece of starfruit, I finally discover what the term inner peace truly means. Also, the good thing about buying the key to the town is you can buy seeds from Pierre as early as 8.30 a.m. We have a total of 330,000 gold after selling our starfruit to Pierre, so I warp to the desert and purchase 400 more starfruit seeds. The rest of the day is spent planting these seeds. I head to Clint's on day 153 and ask him to upgrade my hoe. Then it's off to the Skull Caverns. I really want to make some more progress on the museum collection, so as much as I don't like doing this, it's time for another little time skip. The rest of today, as well as days 154 through 157, are spent going through the Skull Caverns, collecting as many Omni Geodes as I possibly can. Every Omni Geode I have at the end of this little Skull Cavern adventure will be traded for artifact troves. On day 158, I head to Clinty Winty and ask him to break open all of my artifact troves, geodes, and frozen geodes. I get a good few artifacts and a mineral from these that can be donated to the museum, so that is exactly what I do. We're not finished with the museum collection quite yet, but we are pretty close, I would say. I return to Clinty Poo. <laughs> I don't know why I call him these things. I return to Clinty Poo and ask him to upgrade my watering can. I spend the rest of the day clearing out debris on the farm, trying to win key coins in the casino, purchasing hardwood fences and placing these fences around the farm. I have some good news on day 159. I have placed almost all of the fences I needed to place on the farm. We just need around 100 more for the bottom section of the farm and we will be thriving. I pay a visit to the walnut room and take a look at the special orders Mr. Key has for us. They are absolutely vile. I cannot stress this enough, there is no way I will ever voluntarily attempt to do either of these special orders. I'm not strong enough to complete them. I'm also very lazy, so it would just be a bad time all round. I need a pick-me-up after seeing that absolutely diabolical display of tomfoolery from Mr. Key. So I spend the rest of the day taking everything out of the random chests on the farm and bringing them into the storage shed. This continues on day 160 as I finish clearing out the chests in the farmhouse. I also pick up the furnaces beside the house and place them, along with some new ones I made, into the second shed. Next on the agenda is to fill up the third shed with as many kegs as I have. This is something I wanted to do earlier, like the beginning of year two earlier, 
but it completely slipped my mind until now. I ask Robin to build yet another shed on day 161. I will more than likely put mayonnaise machines and cheese presses into this shed. I spend the rest of the day in the casino winning key coins so I can buy more hardwood fences in the future. I head to the quarry on day 162 where I chop down every tree and break every rock. Then I plant tree saplings while also using tree fertilizer. We're going to need a lot of wood in the future, so I'll come back every 5 or 6 days to chop down the trees and replant them. We have a starfruit harvest on day 163. I throw some of the starfruit into the kegs in our shed, collect my iridium watering can from Clint, and ask him to upgrade my trash can. I buy 339 starfruit seeds from Sandy, then I finally pick up all of the eggs that have been accumulating in the coop. Robin has a special order for us. She would like 80 pieces of hardwood, so we will take care of that over the next few days. It's off to Ginger Island for the rest of the day to place all of the iridium sprinklers I have and hoe the ground to prepare it for tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, on day 164 I plant all of the starfruit seeds I have. This should make us around 200, maybe 300,000 gold when it's time to harvest them all. It's off the sandy shop to purchase another 250 starfruit seeds, 100 or so of which I plant on Ginger Island. I head into the walnut room and accept the Danger in the Deep special order. Completing this special order has just become my number one priority. I don't actually need to complete it to achieve any of my goals, I just want to prove to myself that I can do it. It will probably be difficult, but I'm going to prepare for it as much as I can. I head to the saloon and buy 50 pizzas. And that's it for the preparation. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day where I make it down to floor 17 before I pass out. It's right back to the mines on day 165. You should probably get used to hearing me say that for the next couple of days by the way. I put everything I had into the special order. The bad news is I got knocked out in the mines and lost 39 pizzas which really ruined the vibe. So it's off to the saloon to buy another 50 pizzas. On day 166 I head back to the mines as you may have guessed. After making it down to floor 55, I head home and use a large portion of the stone I have to make 21 staircases. Also, Bailey gave birth to a baby sheep, so I call it Sunshine. I purchase a full stack of stone from Robin on day 167 and use it to make 10 staircases, giving us a total of 31. Then, once again, it is off to the mines to continue our adventure. I use the staircases to make it down to floor 88 almost immediately. So we are well on our way to reaching floor 120 and completing the special order on time. I decide to put absolutely everything I have into this, blazing through floor after floor after floor. A monster only floor threatened to slow down my progress but I had enough stone to make a staircase so I was able to skip that one. It was off to the races after that as I reached floor 110 at around 10.30pm, then floor 115 at midnight. Finally, a well-placed mega bomb on floor 119 revealed the ladder and I arrived at my destination. Floor 120. Mr. Key's special order has been completed. We can come back here in the future and activate the shrine on this floor to swap between the normal mines and these mines. I place mayonnaise machines, cheese presses, preserve jars and oil makers into a shed on day 168. There are a couple of artisan goods I still need to throw into my shipping bin like truffle oil. And we'll make good money from selling cheese, mayonnaise, etc. So, you know, not to toot my own horn here, but I think this was a fairly decent choice. Maybe. Now that I think about it, I could have just made more kegs and put them in the shed, so I don't actually know how decent of a choice this really was. But, ah, sure look it. I'll take all the gold I can get at this point. Just to be safe, I buy 25 of each summer seed. We'll need these crops for cooking recipes later in the future. Like, much later in the future. I should have done this at the end of spring too, like buying the seeds, but I could purchase Piers missing stock list in the walnut room during fall or winter and that let me buy all of the seeds at any time, so everything will be okay. I ask Robin to upgrade one of our sheds, then it's time for the dance of the Moonlight Jellies Festival. I said this before, I will say it again. This is, without a doubt, my favourite festival in the entire game. I love the atmosphere, the lighting, the beach, the music. It's all perfect, and I will forever hold this festival near and dear to my heart. And with that, our second summer has come to an end.
Day 169, the first day of fall. I start the season by purchasing as many cranberry seeds as I can. Clint wants us to defeat 50 dust sprites in the mines, so we'll take care of that as soon as we can. And by that I mean right now. I make my way through the mines, demolishing every dust sprite I see. Just before midnight I complete the special order and receive 6,000 gold. Clint sends us the crafting recipe for the geode crusher on day 170. This is very good. The sooner we unlock all of the crafting recipes, the better. I head to the walnut room and purchase Pierre's missing stock list. I give Pierre's missing stock list to Pierre, of course. Now we can purchase all of the seeds during any season. The rest of the day is spent planting all of the cranberry seeds I have. On day 171, I want to show you all something I have been doing for a few weeks now. Digging up the ground in the mountain area. I also do it in other areas, but anyway, the reason why I do this is because you can get artifacts by doing it. Speaking of, we are really close to finishing the museum collection. Like, really, really close. I head to Clint's and collect my copper trash can and ask him to crack open the geodes I have with me. Then it's off to the Skull Caverns because we need Omni Geodes. Which means another timescape is on the agenda. So it is with a slightly heavy heart I not wait. <laughs> I'm surprised that is the first time I've said the word slightly like that in a video. I do it so often in real life. It is with a slightly heavy heart I announce that the rest of the day as well as days 172 through 177 are spent in the Skull Cavern. The goal here of course being to collect as many Omni Geodes as I can. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to do this. I'll only be going back to the Skull Cavern in the future to get Iridium Ore. On day 178, things are looking really good for us. We have 17 artifact troves, and we only have 5 artifacts left to donate. I head into Clint's and ask him to crack the artifact troves open. Almost immediately we get the Bone Flute. That is a really good start. Then we get the Elvish Jewelry, followed by the Dried Starfish. The fourth one we need is the Ancient Sword, which we also pick up. Unfortunately, we didn't get the fifth and final artifact we need, so I make my way back to the Skull Cavern. Nah, just kidding. The final artifact we need can be acquired by digging up the ground in the desert. I do this and receive a strange doll. This strange doll gets donated to the museum, which means we have fully completed the museum collection. It has been a long journey, but we made it. We actually made it. We have donated every artifact and mineral. I am... So happy right now, I can't even describe it. I receive a star drop for doing this. I ask Robin to upgrade another one of her sheds. Now it is finally time to show one of the many, many cutscenes in this game. I do not know why I haven't shown a cutscene in such a long time, but... You know. You know. There you go. Any whomst, we have the option of either inviting Linus to live on the farm with us, or saying we're just happy Linus is doing well. Telling Linus we're happy he's doing well rewards us with a full fringe apart, so it's always worth picking that one. My voice is going. This is bad. Day 179 is Cranberry Harvest Day. I make sure to fully appreciate this harvest as what I'm about to do next is more than likely going to lead to me becoming very upset for a while. It is time to collect the remaining golden walnuts. The first step in this journey is to complete the field office donations. We only need... Two more artifacts for this, so it shouldn't take too long. Right? Wrong. I head to the dig site and do some panning to try to get the first artifact. I do not receive this artifact. With a heavy heart, I make my way to the Ginger Island farm with the intention of acquiring the second artifact. To get this, we simply need to dig up artifact spots. I'm not even going to pretend that I'm optimistic here. I can tell you for a fact that the second artifact is going to take such a long time to find. I use a rain totem before I head to bed. On day 180, I break a muscle node and receive a golden walnut. That's actually a pretty good start to the day. I'm already feeling a lot better. Okay, no, I'm, I'm lying. I don't feel better. In fact, I, I actually feel worse because that means I have just used up all of my luck, which means it's going to take even longer to find the two artifacts. I place five flute blocks down near the mermaid to complete a puzzle and receive five more golden walnuts. I head to the dig site where I can't do any panning, then I head back to the farm and just go to sleep. This is incredibly upsetting, I, I, I was not mentally prepared for this to happen. I head straight to the dig site on day 181 where I thankfully get the fossilized tail. That is one of the two artifacts we need. 
that is the good news. The bad news is I have always, always struggled to find that last artifact. No matter how many artifact spots I dig up, it always takes so long for it to appear. It's been that way in basically every playthrough. Like, no joke, if I was doing any other goal right now, I would say something like, I'm going to be optimistic here, I know I can get this done soon. But I just can't say that for this situation, I would be lying if I did. Days 182 and 183 are spent looking for artifact spots before we head to the Stardew Valley Fair on day 184. We all know what happened at last year's Stardew Valley Fair. I don't even want to talk about it. But this year is going to be different, because I now have disposable income. I place 9 items into my Grange display and end up coming in first place, which means I receive 1,000 star tokens. Then I immediately purchase almost 2,000 more tokens for around 100,000 gold. Look, I know that's a lot of gold, but I'm not going through what I went through last year, alright? That still haunts my nightmares. I use my tokens to purchase a rare crow and the final star drop I needed. Today has been a good day, and I am very grateful for that. Some more good news on day 185 as our starfruit wine is ready for collection. I add more kegs to this shed before going back to Ginger Island. I don't like being here anymore, I just want that last artifact. You know what, I'm going to be fully honest. At this point I started struggling when it came to writing the script for this video. Like, all I'm doing is searching for an artifact spot. But I will do my best to ensure that the next few days are at least halfway entertaining. I dig up an artifact spot on day 186 and I receive three Omni Geodes. That is not what I want, but that is okay, because I can be incredibly dedicated when I want to be. I am 100%, no actually, 101% committed to getting that artifact. Also our starfruit is ready for harvest, so you know, the fact that I was about to make like 300,000 gold made me feel better about everything, so we're vibing right now, we're good. On day 187, I finally, finally, still do not find the artifact. I use a warp totem to get back to the farm in Pelican Town and collect all of the seeds I have for my storage shed. I plant a yam, artichoke, red cabbage and bok choy seed in the greenhouse because I need to ship those for the shipping collection goal. I have a very sad announcement to make on day 188. I have decided to sell Butters the cow. I just felt like he didn't suit the vibe here on the farm and okay, no, the, the truth is I needed space in the barn so I could throw an ostrich egg into an incubator when I get one. Butters did nothing wrong, I'm the problem. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem, it's me. I harvest three sweet gem berries, which isn't actually a big deal at all now that I think about it. I don't know why I mentioned that. I make three tea saplings and finally collect all of the rewards that have been sitting in the museum. Then it's back to Ginger Island. Yay. I plant the three tea saplings because I need tea leaves and green tea for the shipping collection. I head to Leo's treehouse on day 189 to ask the parrot for a hint about where I can find golden walnuts. The parrot says to help the man in the tent. Which of course refers to donating artifacts to the field office. So that doesn't exactly do much for us right now unfortunately. Once again, I use a warp totem to get back to the farm where a cranberry harvesting sesh takes place. Next, I visit the dwarf and purchase a rare crow. Then I make my way to the casino and buy another rare crow and as many hardwood fences as I can. I ask Robin to add a cellar to the house and spend the rest of the day placing hardwood fences in the lower half of the farm. We receive the crafting recipe for the deluxe scarecrow on day 190 as a reward for collecting all of the rare crows. Over on Ginger Island, I of course do not find the artifact I need. This is actually heartbreaking. It's the same story on day 191. It's not all bad though. Even though my soul is being torn apart right now, I still make time to chop down trees, get some ores in the mine, harvest any crops that are ready, yada yada yada. So I'm still making good use of my time despite this whole kerfuffle. I accept a special order from Mr. Key on day 192. He wants us to ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items. I purchase 700 coffees in the saloon, turn them into triple shot espressos and throw them into the shipping bin to complete the special order. I also completely forgot about the quest we can get from Birdie. How did it take me this long to remember this is a thing? I actually can't believe I haven't done this yet. I take the memento Birdie gave us and give it to Kent who gives us gourmet tomato salt. 
I give this tomato salt to Gus who gives us a Stardew Valley rose. And that's it for today. I collect a ton of starfruit wine on day 193 so I'm back to feeling pretty good. Dare I even say I am feeling really good. I sell this wine to Pierre and give the Stardew Valley rose to Sandy who gives us an advanced TV remote. I give this to George who gives us an arctic shard. I give this to the wizard who gives us a wriggling worm. Finally, I give the worm to Willy who gives us the pirate's locket. I turn some coffees I purchased into triple shot espressos and search for an artifact spot. I do not find one. Also, because it is raining, Birdie is not outside which means I can't give her the pirate's locket today. Sometimes I can't tell whether this game loves me or hates me. Maybe it's both. It's probably, but it's definitely both now that I think about it. On day 194, I find an artifact. Unfortunately, it is not the one I need. I do give the pirate's locket to Birdie and complete her quest though. We receive 5 golden walnuts for this. Sweet. On day 195, I still have not gotten the artifact I need. I am tremendously upset right now. Day 196, the final day of fall. I didn't find the artifact today either. I decide to plant 4 or 5 of each seed I have just to be prepared for the cooking recipes when I make them in the future. Alright, let's be real here. The last 10 or so days of this season have basically been me talking about how I couldn't get the last artifact I need. I want to make it up to you all. So, here is a dramatic retelling of the events of this season. Once upon a time, a little hummingbird lived in a magical kingdom called Pelican Town. The hummingbird was happy there. It had a nice cozy nest in a big beautiful forest. Food was plentiful. The area was peaceful. The hummingbird had friends, many friends. It loved each and every one of them. But one day, the hummingbird grew restless. It wanted to explore a new area to take on a new challenge. The hummingbird heard about a treasure buried deep in the sands in a place called Ginger Island. And so the hummingbird took flight. It flew and flew and flew. The hummingbird became exhausted but pushed on, determined to reach its destination. Finally, it landed on the sandy shores of Ginger Island. The hummingbird worked tirelessly, day and night, day in and day out. But try as it might, it could not find the treasure it was searching for. The hummingbird was heartbroken. It had left its magical kingdom for one reason and one reason only and it had failed. But then the hummingbird realized something. Failure is not the end, but rather the starting point of a future victory. And so the hummingbird's current chapter may be over, but its story has only truly just begun. Right, so I would like to make a quick announcement as we begin day 197. I am implementing a new rule. From now on, I can't specifically mention looking for the artifact. If I find it, I will mention it, but other than that, I won't talk about it. Any whomst, Mr. Key would like four prismatic shards. This is a handy special order, so I tend to choose it when it pops up. We have a starfruit harvest, which means our bank account is going to look absolutely delicious really soon. I purchase the teleportation tower that lets me warp back to Pelican Town from the Ginger Island farm, throw starfruit into the kegs, and plant some winter seeds. Gunther would like us to bring him 100 pieces of bone, so we'll power through that at some point. I head to the wizard's tower on day 198 and purchase the earth and water obelisks. It's off to the desert to purchase starfruit seeds and some cactus fruit. I'm not entirely sure why I bought the cactus fruit, to be completely honest with you. And also, that's it for today. On day 199, I head to the sewer and reset my foraging perks. Now we can choose different perks when we go to sleep tonight. For some reason, I completely forgot about the abandoned Georgia Mart bundle until now. The good news is that it won't be too difficult to complete this one because of how late in the game we're tackling it. I head to the Volcano Dungeon and make it to floor 5 where I purchase a cooking recipe and a crafting recipe. When I head to sleep, I choose the Gatherer perk, which gives us a chance to receive two of any forage item we pick up. I also pick the perk that guarantees Iridium quality forage. 
I hit the robins on day 200 and ask her to upgrade one of her sheds. Except I don't do that because I can't afford it. That was humbling. Also, I need to make a change to the format of this video. We have reached a point where I just don't have enough interesting things to talk about each day. So from now on, I will talk about what I did each week instead of each day. From now until the end of day 203, I throw a mango into the shipping bin, harvest winter forage, plant more winter seeds, and head to the mines to collect the bones Gunther asked for. I used a monster musk while I did this, so it greatly sped up the process. I watched Krobus's 14 heart cutscene for the very first time. A sea monster sort of picks up Krobus and gives him a ride in the water. I, it's, I don't know how to explain It's like a carnival ride, I guess. I, I don't really know what else to say about this one. But I really like this cutscene. It was, it was cute. I also head to Robins and ask her to upgrade one of her sheds. And this time, I actually had enough gold to afford it. Finally, I place mini fridges in the kitchen to prepare for when I start making all of the cooking recipes. The period of days 204 through 210 begins with me accepting a special order from Caroline. She wants us to grow and ship 100 pineapples. The reward for this is the solar panel crafting recipe. We need this crafting recipe, so it is very, very, very important that we complete this order. I plant all of the pineapple seeds I have, along with the Lux Speed Grow. Unless something goes terribly wrong, we should reach 100 pineapples after we harvest them for the second time. Our starfruit wine is ready, which is always a BEA beautiful sight. I donate the items needed for the Georgia Mart bundle, completing it and unlocking the theater. I chop down some of the trees at the quarry. This is something I'll be doing quite often from now on, even more so than I used to. This is because I really want to fill another shed up with kegs to speed up the money making process. I dig up an artifact spot on Ginger Island and finally receive the snake vertebrae. I am so happy that's out of the way. I head to the field office, donate the snake vertebrae and realize I have made a terrible mistake. I did not need the fossilized tail. I need the fossilized skull. This is a development I did not see coming. I am not happy about this. But thankfully it's really easy to get the fossilized skull. I bring my golden coconuts to Clint, ask him to crack them open, and receive the skull. I donate it to the field office, finally completing the collection. In return, I receive the crafting recipe for the ostrich incubator. I head to Leo's house and ask the parrot for hints on where the remaining three golden walnuts are. The parrot refuses to tell me anything. Alright, this, this could be bad. Like, like really bad. But I do have two ideas on where we could get the final three walnuts. I head to the cave where you can play the Simon Says game, but it turns out I have already completed this. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a little anxious here, not gonna lie. In order to calm my nerves, I head back home and start making all of the cooking recipes I have unlocked up to this point. I take a break from this to buy rhubarb and beet seeds from Sandy, purchase the tropical curry recipe from Gus, and plant the rhubarb and beet seeds. I also buy jazz seeds and deluxe speed grow from Pier and plant these too. I head to the Pirate Cove where I play a game of darts three times to receive three golden walnuts. And with that, we have collected all 130 golden walnuts. I shouldn't be too proud of this considering I collected over 100 of them during the first year, but still. I am genuinely over the moon right now. Now all we have to do before the end of winter is throw an ostrich egg, tea leaves and green tea into the shipping bin and that is all four goals completed. I harvest starfruit, purchase the workbench, and set up a little workstation in the cellar. I start throwing the ingredients needed for crafting recipes into a chest. Crafting every item is something I want to get out of the way as soon as possible. During days 211 through 218, I harvest winter forage and of course replant the winter seeds. I originally planned on putting the ostrich egg I have into the incubator, but... Like a restaurant worker who has just handed in their two weeks notice, I'm tired of waiting. So I throw the ostrich egg into the shipping bin. I purchase around 800 wood and stone from Robin, which will be used for the crafting recipes. I wanted to buy coal from Clint, but he left his shop right as I got there. You know, I've seen people say Marnie is very unreliable and is never at home when they need to purchase something from her, but Clint is so much worse for me. It genuinely feels like he does something that really inconveniences me every single playthrough. I do eventually end up getting the coal from him though, so I forgive him. We can be friends again. 
But for now, until he inevitably does something to upset me again in a future playthrough, I get started on making the crafting recipes. And by that I mean I make almost every single crafting recipe available to us right now. So all we really need to do after making the two or three we still have left to craft is unlock the solar panel and mini obelisk recipes and purchase the hopper recipe from Mr. Key. I plant garlic seeds on Ginger Island because I need garlic for a crafting recipe. Also, I really should have mentioned this a bit sooner, but I've been putting quite a bit of effort into our friendships this year. I've done my best to give every villager a birthday present so it won't take as long to reach maximum friendship with every villager next year. I harvest our final batch of winter forage. There was time to plant winter seeds again before the end of the year, but I decided to sell the majority of this forage instead of turning them into winter seeds. Our first pineapple harvest takes place, and I really hope I'm not jinxing it when I say this, but... I think we're guaranteed to complete Caroline's special order when we harvest the pineapples for the second time. Speaking of harvest, it's time to collect our starfruit, starfruit wine, and oak resin. I buy 750 copper and iron ore as well as 300 coal from Clint. Then I head to the sewer and reset my farming perks. I purchase 25 of each cooking product because I honestly cannot be bothered going back to piers again in the future. I'm sick of being in a shop at this point. I cook a bruschetta which means we have officially cooked every dish we can at this point. I need to unlock 5 more recipes I think and then we're done with that. I get started on smelting all of the copper and iron ore and choose the wrong farming perks when I go to sleep. I wanted the perk that gives you a 40% bonus when you sell artisan goods like wine. Days 219 through 224 are the final days of winter. I begin by smelting the remaining iron ore. Just in case anybody is curious, the copper and iron ore will be used to make kegs. The wizard is looking for ectoplasm. Yeah, you remember when I accepted this special order a while ago but didn't do it because I thought the reward was the crafting recipe from Monster Musk? I was wrong. The reward for this special order is the crafting recipe for the mini obelisk which I still need to get. I buy back 5 crystal fruit from Pierre and head into the mines after consuming a monster musk. I fully expected to spend the rest of winter trying to get the ectoplasm. I was very very wrong. Almost immediately I defeated the ghost and it dropped the ectoplasm. I bring it to the wizard and complete his order. Alright, I guess that's done. Nice. I head to the sewer because I have to reset my farming perks again thanks to my little blunder. I harvest tea leaves, put a few kegs into a shed, throw two tea leaves into them, and throw the remaining tea leaf into the shipping bin. I choose the artisan perk this time. I craft the mini obelisk, collect the green tea from the kegs, and throw them into the shipping bin too. And with that, we have fully completed the shipping collection. That is the fourth and final goal we set for the second year completed. Mr. Key wants us to give out 50 love gifts in one week. That sounds like a beautiful way to spend the last few days of winter, so it's time to become Santa Claus for a while. And it'll help with our friendships, so it's a win-win. For the longest time, I hated having to give gifts to the villagers and talk to them and just the whole general process of increasing my friendship with them. Like, I would have to hype myself up and really motivate myself to do it. But I've sort of been enjoying it during the last two or three playthroughs I've done. It's actually relaxing going around town and giving them gifts. So I'm really happy we got that special order from Mr. Key. And we'll get 40 key gems for completing it, so that's a nice bonus. I purchase 50 coffees while I'm in the saloon, place more kegs in the second shed, and fill them with starfruit. I head to the Feast of the Winter Star, and to be honest with you all, I have no idea who I have to give a gift to. Lewis did send me a letter telling me who it is, but I didn't pay attention to it at all, so I'm very confused. I talked to as many villagers as I had to until I eventually got the option to give Demetrius a gift. I play it safe and give him a prismatic shard which he loves. Then Pam gives me a bottle of wine. Thank you Pamela. With that lovely festival out of the way, it's back to handing out gifts to the residents of Pelican Town. I take a quick break from this to buy five and a half stacks of wood from Robin. Then I give a poppy seed muffin to Leah to complete the special order, earning us 40 key gems. I make 127 kegs and fill this shed with them, and put starfruit inside the kegs. I harvest 4 pineapples in the greenhouse, buy more speed growth from Pierre, and harvest our pineapples for the second time. As I'm throwing them into the shipping bin, I am almost certain that we've shipped enough to complete Caroline's special order, but we'll know for sure on the final day of winter. 
I head to the walnut room and purchase the hopper crafting recipe for 50 key gems. I also plant all of the ancient fruit seeds that I've gotten from seed makers up to this point. The plan is to turn any and all ancient fruit we harvest in year 3 into ancient fruit wine. On the final day of our second year, Caroline sends us the crafting recipe for the solar panel. This, along with the hopper recipe, were the final two recipes I needed. I craft both of these items, which means we have just crafted every item in the game. I collect some starfruit wine and sell it to Pierre. And I think that is a good time to say goodbye to our second year. That was honestly a lot of fun. It did take me a couple of days in-game to get back into the swing of things after I took a short break before starting year 2, but I'm pretty happy with what I achieved this year. I hope you all enjoyed watching my little adventure. But let's not dilly-dally for too long. Let's finish this playthrough, once and for all. We get a cutscene with Grandpa at the beginning of her third year. He is very happy with the progress we have made so far. All four candles at Grandpa's shrine are lit up, so we are given the Statue of Perfection as a reward. At this point in the video, all I have left to do to achieve perfection is finish reaching maximum hearts with every villager, buy the gold clock and the island and desert obelisks, and cook four more dishes. All four of the recipes for these dishes are given to us by villagers as we increase our friendship with them. I don't really see the point in dragging this out and trying to go into a ton of detail like I normally do, so days 225 to... Uh... Hold on, I think I need a calculator for this one. Alright, days 225 through 357 are spent working on these final tasks. The main things I do during this period of time are harvest cranberries, give gifts to the villagers, harvest ancient fruit, throw ancient fruit into seed makers to get more ancient seeds, Purchase the Lux Speed Grow and fill up the entirety of the Ginger Island farm with ancient fruit seeds. Any and all ancient fruit we harvest are thrown into our kegs. One thing I want to specifically mention is the dwarf and what happened on their birthday. I meant to give them a ruby but accidentally gave them a triple shot espresso. This one mistake just ensured that the dwarf will be the last person we reach max friendship with. I purchase the furniture catalogue from Robin and finally decorate my house to cheer myself up. It's pretty similar to the way I normally decorate my house in every playthrough, but I have made a few changes. Overall, I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I like the vibe of my house. Dare I even say I believe it is aesthetically pleasing. As the season of fall begins, I decide to start beautifying the farm. This took a bit longer than I thought it would, mainly because of how much wood, stone, and weeds there was. But after clearing all of that stuff off the farm, it was just a case of putting grass everywhere. I sell most of our ancient fruit wine and the starfruit wine I kept to Pierre, bringing us up to 2 million gold. I head to the wizard's tower and purchase the desert obelisk and the island obelisk. Also, I have some good news. I have managed to time it perfectly so the ancient fruit on the Pelican Town farm, on the Ginger Island farm, and in the greenhouse will all be ready to harvest on the same day every time. Wait, no, no it won't, I messed up. The bottom row of ancient fruit in the greenhouse needs one or two more days before it's ready. As I mentioned earlier, the dwarf is now the only person I need to achieve max friendship with. But, the good news is we are very close to doing that, which I'm very grateful for because in the clip on the screen right now, it is day 287. So we've spent a long, long time on our friendships. Also, some more good news, I waited a couple of days and now all of the ancient fruit we have planted everywhere will be ready on the same day every single time. I give the dwarf an aqua marine not just once but twice and it was very, very nice. I cook the final four dishes and head to Ginger Island where a visit to the Walnut Room reveals that we have achieved 90% completion. All we have to do now is earn 10 million gold and purchase the gold clock. Before I skip ahead to that, I would first like to show you all my farm and house just in case anybody wants to see them. Again, I'm pretty happy with how both of them turned out. I love their aura, you know I feel a deep sense of comfort when I look at these two pictures. Also, I just noticed I never put any fish in the fish tank in our house. I totally meant to do that. I, I definitely didn't just forget to put any fish into it. Okay, no, seriously, that's actually annoying me. I can't believe I never filled up the fish tank. 
Anyway, I collect all of the ancient fruit wine that is ready in our first keg shed along with the ancient fruit wine and ancient fruit I had in a chest in that same shed. Then I do the exact same thing in our second keg shed. I head to Pierre and sell everything to him, bringing us up to around 9.8 million gold. I have made a severe miscalculation. I really did think that would bring us up to 10 million gold. Oh no. I run to Ginger Island and throw everything I kept in the chest there into the shipping bin. I also head back home, collect all of the cooked dishes I've made and throw them into the shipping bin too. This earns us 177,000 gold. We almost have enough, we just need 46,000 more gold. Luckily, the ancient fruit in our greenhouse is ready for harvest, so I collect them and sell them to Pierre, which brings us up to the magical number. I head to the wizard's tower and finally purchase the gold clock. I place it beside the coop. I visit the walnut room where the perfection tracker confirms we have achieved 100% completion. On day 358, wow, that took a lot of time. Uh, on day 358, I make my way to the summit where the final cutscene in the game plays. I was expecting Krobus to be there, so you can imagine how disappointed I was when I saw Lewis waiting for us instead. But that is not important. What is important is we have finally completed this playthrough. It's been over a year in real life since I have achieved perfection without using mods, so I'm feeling sensational right now. I mean, yeah, it did take me 358 days to do it. Just to put that in perspective, that means I achieved perfection on the 22nd day of spring in year 4. That's not very fast, I'll be honest. But still, I'm just happy that it's done and dusted. This whole playthrough was a lot of fun. It was challenging. Very challenging, don't get me wrong. But it was nice playing through the game without using any mods. It takes me back to simpler times. Anyway, I think that's a good place to leave this playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.